What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Off the Record. Listen, folks, getting tickets sucks, but it's not about crimes. This is a financial system that you have no choice but to partake in, guys. It's all about the governments, the insurance company extracting money from your wallet. But what do you do? You fight every ticket. You always fight your tickets, guys, because you almost always can win them. You can win them a huge percentage of the time. And how do I know this? Because I work with Off the Record. Off the Record is the best place to go if you want to be prepared to fight a ticket anywhere in the country. You may be the brother of the best ticket lawyer in your town. Well, that'll be very helpful in your town. What if you get a ticket somewhere far away? What if you get a ticket where, God forbid, you have a mandatory court appearance? Offtherecord.com slash TST. These guys have an excellent track record of hooking you up with qualified attorneys in the area that you need them to fight your tickets on your behalf and to win By hiring off the record to fight your tickets for you, you are exiting yourself from that perpetual ecosystem of money suck that is the increased insurance premium (laughs) that you got a speeding ticket and now your insurance is 20% higher for three years or whatever it is. It's ridiculous. Why participate in that when you don't have to? Get off the record. Either go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app. That'll get you 10% off anything you do with Off The Record until 2023. Guys, this is a long deal. Bank it in your phone now so you have it when you need it later. Right? Right. We're also brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those amazing sunglasses that you see me in Every video wearing, right, the matte finish, these are amazing lenses. When I drive out in the bright desert sun every single day, basically, um, these things keep my eyes from hurting at the end of the day, from getting too dry from the glare, um, and they come in plastic sort of wraparound styles, they come in a Wayfarer style, they come in multiple different aviator styles, and you can even get them in a prescription. Uh, Go to thesmokingtire.com and click on that Dylan Optics banner Uh, on the Partners tab. I know it's a little backwards to do it, but just go to my website at thesmokingtire.com, click on the Partners tab. There's Dylan. If you hit that banner, you will get a free Smoking Tire T-shirt for every pair of Dylan Optics sunglasses you order. You order three pairs, you get three T-shirts. It's like that, folks. Go to thesmokingtire.com, click on the Dylan banner in the Partners tab. It is ideal, as they would say. I don't know who says it's ideal, but I say it. I say it. Also, speaking of shirts, our Blipshift store, blipshift.com slash TST. We've got a new shirt. It's only up for, for two weeks, uh, and that was starting on the 6th. So 6th until November 20th. It's our Making Fun of Tesla's na- uh, Tunnel Scam shirt. This comes from the episode uh, where me and Johnny got into a fight about Tesla, uh, a fight which I won. Uh, why did I win? Well, it's my show, and I won. That's why. And so you can go back and listen to that. It's a couple episodes back, me and a couple of Jews yelling at each other about Tesla. But in the meantime, while it is fun to make fun of Tesla on the Internet, it is much more fun to make fun of Elon Musk out in person where you can see people, the disdain on people's faces when they see your shirt for calling out the fraud that is uh, the Tesla tunnels. Uh, and so that's our shirt, blipshift.com slash TST for these shirts only until November 20th. Alrighty, I've been waiting to have this uh, gentleman on the show, man, for quite some time. He was on our show at the old place, but it's always good to have him back. He is one of the best photographers working in the automotive medium, bar none. He travels all over the world every week to do motorsports, he does drifting, he's the official, like, photographer of Pikes Peak, Um, he's the official, he's sponsored by Canon, he's such a G, I love working with him, he's uh, he's definitely one of my favorite photographers ever, and he's such a good dude, so enthusiastic, and such a great person, Larry Chen is on the Smoking Tire Podcast. So we could be. We're yeah. fucking. We're at another level right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. We're I really. Like we're moving like quickly this. around yeah. here. But how exciting! A fucking new house with a shop. You, you know, sick. It's it's crazy because for the longest time, 
we've been looking for a place like almost two years my wife and i we wanted to just get a bigger space you know for the kids and also so we can have more cars and actually work on them. And you <laughs> yeah. know, and do you require any kind of photo studio or do you just have a big desktop computer and that's it? Here's the crazy thing. Um, essentially what we got was, it is a photo studio now. Mm -hmm. We've been shooting videos on site. I've been shooting stills on site. I could drive into my backyard. Oh, cool. And it's hilarious because Bro, you could be sitting- outdoor seamless. What if you got it built an outdoor seamless? You just have to get, <laughs> You know who you call? Skateboard ramp guys. The yeah. guys who build big vert ramps. It's basically just a quarter pipe painted white. I like you that. You can have an outdoor seamless at your crib. You just need to like power wash that shit before you use it. That would be hilarious. But, you know, as you know, with me, we've shot together so many times. I love using natural light. Mm -hmm. And just the natural scenery that we have available. I kind of feel like uh, at one point maybe it was a horse property, and that's probably why it wasn't divvied up. Yeah. Um, but the property itself is crazy. We have ten neighbors, ten houses that surround us. Uh huh. But for some reason, this property never got broken up. It's awesome. And that's you know we're taking that to advantage. I'm able to shoot like on the grass or on the pavement or uh, in the shop or. It, it's just such a change to actually have space. And yeah. you know, like and living on the West side, I grew up in the West side, I grew up in Santa Monica, you know, just You understand to, why I built this then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to be able to work on a car. I remember I had to go into storage, unlock my toolbox and roll it however many hundred feet to my place. <laughs> yeah. And I have to clean up everything, make sure nothing is on the floor. Otherwise yeah. we would get uh, fined from HOA or whatever, you know, there's just, it's just hard. And then, you know, you see those pictures of people doing like engine swaps and stuff on the side of the road. Bro, in That's New York City, thing. Zach, were you with me in Manhattan? We were in fucking like the West Village or like on St. Mark's or something. And a dude is out there with a, a drop light doing like a transmission on a WRX like in the gutter. I'm like, bro. <laughs> people get it done sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking craziness, dude. <laughs> but no, having your own space, like, believe me, I know. Yeah. Yeah, For me, it's, it's, something it's not else. wrenching because I don't fucking wrench. For me, the best part about all of this shit is I have my own detail shop. Oh. Which is like oh, wow. the game changer. Okay, so I didn't take um, any photos of the inside of your area. The only thing I took a photo of um, is your detail area. The conduit on the wall? Th that thing, th that area is, is so amazing. I mean, uh, before, for us, we had to wait. We, we had such a small window of when we can actually detail the car. You know, it's it's just usually blazing hot, yeah. right, where we are. We're in the valley. Uh, and you have to wait for it to be kind of cool. And then also direct sunlight for cars. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Water so spots. So our cars sit that. inside. It's yeah. great. They don't have to go outside. It's, and also, like, they we can – we have perm – like, it's permitted. Like, I can – Oh, nice. I have, it's, it's like you can't legally wash a car in your own fucking driveway on the west side. It's illegal. Oh, my God. Because of the because of the storm water, right? Yeah. You can't wa wash soap into the L.A. River. Yeah. Because in the ocean kills the fish. I have a – collector that filters it all out oh so, wow yeah and then it feeds the plants i like that. the car wash water feeds all the plants yeah but now with our <laughs> shop um not yeah it's nothing like what you have <laughs> but, bro but the fact if that i had what you had i wouldn't have done any of this if i had a 2100 <laughs> square foot building in my backyard you think i'd bother with any of this bullshit <laughs> the, the thing is i could anytime if i if i can't go to sleep i'll just walk into my shop and i could start detailing my car it's which awesome is, just something else and I, I'm just so grateful you know this job which is crazy taking pictures I'm taking pictures yeah day of things you want to take pictures yeah of. things that I love things that you love um, and lucky and lucky enough I've been able to take pictures of you which by the way uh, I still just use not, the ones you took of me with the fucking sweatshirt on and the fox body. I use I, that as headshots all the time. <laughs> I love those, and I love that They're the good. first shoot we did together was on film. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just shot a whole thing on film for Road and Track. It was the best. I did a road trip in a Urus across the Pacific Northwest, yeah. and I shot it on Velvia 50. Oh. It was so great. But, God, the, even for 50, the grain was driving me nuts, and I really was like... Don't buy him a Mia RZ67. Don't buy him a Mia RZ67. I really want to go back to medium format. 
It's like thirty dollars a fucking roll now, though. It's it, crazy. It's really bad when we're in the same room because we could talk <laughs> cars and we could talk cameras. Yeah, we always talk about cars, though. We could talk. To cameras are, I think, they're another level. They're just like it's like cars, watches, mechanical cameras, mechanical yeah. keyboards, and yeah. fountain pens and nerd shit. That, that's that's. Uh, I think we. I probably bring that up anytime I'm on your podcast. The mechanical aspect of cameras and watches. <sighs> It just goes hand in hand. Dude, you know? when I was shooting this 30, I got a little K1000 Pentax. It's mm -hmm. Fabulous. Great camera. You could throw it off a fucking building. It's yeah. made of metal. You know, and when you when you put it up and shoot it, ka clack It's like it's it's I like love it. it's literally like the door close of a G Wagon. It's like, you know, that kind of status or the cock of a nineteen eleven. It's like and then the best is with film, and I said this a million times, and you know, you shoot, but but you you then go back to life, right? You know what I mean. Right. You're not checking it on your phone. I mean, it's so. I great. know you especially love that because you're trying to disconnect away from your phone, and I think about that all the time of of kind of the things that you've been saying mm -hmm. um, in that realm. But uh, I guess so I've been shooting a lot of film, but I've been shooting instant film, so it completely <laughs> throws that out of the water. <laughs> so I finally got this fully manual instant camera. Uh, that's actually made in Hong Kong. Okay. And I use that to take pictures of my family, kids, and I use that actually to take pictures of cars when I'm on set, like with Ken Block or whatever. I just do a bunch of, as many as I can, of, of just these really rare moments. Uh -huh. And what I do is actually um, I give them out to people as like a, this is it, this is yeah. one of one. You can never recreate these things. Uh, so great. one of the things I've been doing is I've been selling prints uh, to, to kind of, um, I guess, like on another, your yeah, yeah, another way to interact with my fans and just car, car community people in general. Like one of the things that you recently just showed me in your office is that poster of that red Lamborghini. Yes. Jeff Swart, 1987. Yeah. That, that, uh, I guess he's like. He's like a senpai to me, you know. Like I look up to we him. We should get you guys on the show together at the same time. Sport rules. That would be insane. But you know, you know I've been, him, right? You've hung yeah, out with him. So right? I, I'm so lucky. I've been able to work with him for the past, I don't know. I'd say almost ten years now. And uh, recently, I followed his effort at Pikes Peak. Oh yeah, of course. But with that said, um, I guess what we've been trying to do, actually, what we did last year, we recreated. Uh, I guess that boyhood poster, right? With your red Lamborghini, and then we sold a lot of them, yeah, twenty thousand dollars worth, and that all got donated to Cal Fire. We should do another one. You know what Let's the one it. I want to recreate is? Because now, because now we've I've got the the nine eleven Safari, the red car, and and I bought a Ferrari, mm -hmm. a three twenty eight. So I want to do the justification for higher education poster. Do you remember that one from back in the day? No, I don't. Remember. Zach, can you Google the poster? The justification for it's it's really like eighties. Sam Ash music store poster yeah. rack kind of poster, but I've always wanted to recreate it in real life, and I think we could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like, we should totally it's do this. that. It just so shows like the mansion that? with the guitars, <laughs> or with all that. the cars in front of it. Yeah, we could totally do that. This is like um, we just have to find a mansion. It, it, it looks like the scene out of that movie Blow. Exactly. You know, where exactly. Hundred percent. <laughs> we could totally recreate that. I see what you're doing here, son. I don't like it. <laughs> It's your life. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I started an Etsy store and I actually print them by hand myself with a Canon large format printer. That's awesome. Yeah. And where can we be, where can we buy them? At LarryChenPhoto.com? So it's uh, Etsy. Yeah. The first one. Automotive Art Prints by. Oh, so just yeah, search Larry ahead. Chen on Etsy. Yeah. Automotive Art Prints by Larry Chen yeah. Photo on Etsy. How is Etsy as a selling service? I buy shit on Etsy a lot. You know what? It's actually really good because it's simple to use. Dude, yeah. on Etsy since 2020, 1,344 well, sales? Is that correct? Yes. So Woo! I started Boy, someone's it. Someone's making money. I started it in April and. You know, I'm so lucky that it's taken off, and I love being able to provide these. This it's the high quality nature of it. I yeah. guess it's something that anybody can print photos. But the point is that I'm printing them large. Dude, like these are saw, totally reasonable prices. Twenty four by thirty six for a hundred bucks? Are you kidding me? The value? Yeah. 
of well, an original Larry Chen for that. Pro- <laughs> that's an unbelievable value. Well, I just um, uh, I printed that that Lamborghini one for you. That is two feet by six feet. That's fucking. By the so, way, Larry came to the shop. He and it's a it's a if if you saw the photo set he did of the Lambo back in the day with the fires, it's a it's a very wide shot of me coming up the Mulholland corner, and it's it's more like kind of a yellow sunrisey shot. A lot of mist. Very fucking sick. And this dude rolls up with a six foot. Print out. He called. You called it a poster. It's not a poster. All right. No. No. It needs to be framed. Because the point is that you could look close and you could see the valve stem. Oh yeah. You know, you could see the tire detail. The point is that it's such a large poster, but you could look at it from three inches away. See, that's why I love you because I, in college, was shooting eight by ten. Right. And four by five. And that's what that's about. That That is the reason you deal with an 80 pound wooden camera with a fucking hood is so that you could put it on the side of a building and it'll be clear. Or you could put it on a wall and you could fucking get your face right here or go way back and you get that massive depth of field. And it's just the best. The yeah. detail. And, you know, with Instagram and, uh, you know, with the Internet in general, so much of that is lost. Yeah. You know, there's just no. Uh, way to really convey the detail in these photos. When we did that shoot, I, I sat there and I tried my best, you know, I made a, who knows, it could have been a 200 megapixel picture, you know, but when I stitched post, from like 20 pictures, yeah, right? Yeah, when yeah. I stitched it together and it overlaps, you know, so it could be potentially even more, but I'm just taking a little bit from each picture just to make it so it's a seamless stitch. Yeah. Um, with that said, what did I use that for? I posted it on Instagram, so it's only like 720 pixels long <laughs> versus the actual picture is like 30,000 pixels long, you know? Yeah. Uh, the only way to for me to actually use it is to print it out yeah. at the highest resolution possible. And uh, yeah, hopefully it looks good here in your I office. I totally agree with you. Like, uh, like there is no... Like I love Instagram because I'm a I'm a photographer and I appreciate other people's photography. So that that medium really speaks to me in terms of intaking content, right? But man, does it hose certain subject matters and certain styles? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. if your thing is incredible detail, Instagram hoses you. If your thing is building a giant where a giant facility, Instagram really hoses you. <laughs> you know what Instagram's good for? Watches and G Wagons, which is per- perfectly <laughs> proportional to the to the window. Well, um uh, we got sidetracked. But with that said, uh I try to you know give those kind of um, Polaroids yeah. to the people who support me, who buy prints or whatever, you know, it's just an extra little surprise that you're never gonna be able to get anywhere else. And I sign each one and it's just kind of a personal touch, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, just to switch subjects super quick, not too long ago, uh, a couple of my friends were like, oh my God, you made it finally. And I'm like, what happened? Cause you mentioned my name on the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's and that, you guys... Joe is that famous that someone who's not even Joe can just mention the thing. Oh, my God. <coughs> like, That's the you Monica guys... Lewinsky of promotions. Yeah, you guys go over <laughs> the uh, IRS, the Mustang, uh-huh. Fox Body Pictures, and it blew all, everybody's mind. That's I hilarious. was like so <laughs> appreciative of no that. Problem. You know, it's just such a simple thing. I mean, because I listen to Joe, yeah. you know, as often as I can. Um, and it was just cool to kind of at least get a little bit of. That's so what, funny. It's funny when shit done. like that happens. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, uh, he, his audience is so big that any random ass thing I mention on that show, I get a thank you note. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, the fucking, I shit you not, the CEO of Grand Seiko North America. It, thank you so much for talking. I'm like, you know, I do an entire podcast about watches, right? And like, you've never fucking heard of me. You don't return my call. But like, right, you know what I mean? Right. But I go, uh, what's that, Matt? Oh, it's a Grand Seiko. F- letter. You know what I mean? Bottle, oh of, bottle of Japanese whiskey. <laughs> Unbelievable. Funny. The bump is real. Yeah. The bump is real. The bump is real. Yeah. Well, anything I can do to make, make your day, I'm down, <laughs> down to do. I like your pandemic hair. It's going well. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I have two different looks. I have the crazy hair mm-hmm. and then I just have my floppy hat on. 
<laughs> yeah, right. This yeah. is so, like your busy yeah, hair. I feel every like. time yeah. you guys have seen me when I'm actually working, when I'm taking pictures, you see the floppy hat. I see floppy hat, and then I see a full UV, uh, full yes. UV shirt cover. You don't even bother fucking with the sunscreen anymore. No, you no. just go straight UV shirt. There's yeah, so much. You know better. Oh my god, I learned yeah. that from you. Changed my life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely made every production better. It's yeah. um, UV shirt rules. Yeah, just that's the way you. We're spending all so much time in the sun. You know, we're spending all of our time outside, and then like the last shoot we did, we're spending our time in a sandstorm, <laughs> a fucking, a f- fucking epic, like a, a sand tornado. That happens. Yeah, sometimes. that happens. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. I have a photo that's framed of uh, at my house of Mike Spinelli, and it's it, it. We went to El Mirage to do some shoot for something, and an actual sandstorm came in, and it like blew us off our feet. We were all just covered in sand, and I. I took this picture of Spinelli with like really like he looked like uh, he had been through like World War Two or something. Like it looked like he'd know. flown a plane with no canopy back in World <laughs> War Two because I think he had he had his like Everest glasses on that yeah. covered his eyes, mm-hmm. and then you know the dust came in and stuck to his sweat, which he produces profusely. And yeah, it's a really great photo. I have it framed in one of those like Mona Lisa gold frames. I in my like that. House. It's really obnoxious. I just I like all the artwork here. Um, a lot of it seems like it means something to you, you know, and yeah. it's, even the elevator. Just little things. Oh, like in the that. elevator? Yo, yeah. my wife put that there. That's me and my first car when I was 17. Oh, so it's good. really funny. I can't wait to blast all of this stuff on Instagram. <laughs> we have a lot. We've tried to put some whimsy into this place. We've tried to not make it too stale. Yeah. We want it to be fun. That's why I like the Lamborghini manifold planter. <laughs> and that's I love a, that. Yeah. That's a good one. I, I just, I've seen so many pictures of it. I just needed to take a picture of it myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what have you been working on? Pike's Peak was cool, right? Um, you know, it's it's been so challenging this year. I know everyone's saying that, but um, I'll be honest, we didn't stop. You know, we did not stop one bit since the lockdown. Uh, it actually, the lockdown happened when I was in Mexico, when I was shooting WRC in Guanajuato. And we were following Ken Block, we we're following the Toyota teams, and they cut the rally one day short uh-huh. because they were afraid that all the European teams would get stuck in Mexico. Yeah. This was like what March like 14th yeah, or something. It, yeah, yeah. It was I think it was that exact day. <clears throat> but anyways, we uh that's when the lockdown started and since then we've been pushing so hard every single weekend some way or another. It well, there's be, been an appetite for content exactly. in general. And a lot of people have been thanking us mm-hmm. um you know, nonstop for continuing to shoot our YouTube series Hunigan Autofocus. Luckily, before the shutdown, we actually shot a 15-episode series in Japan at Tokyo Auto Salon, and we released that at the start of the pandemic. Well, that's nice. That's, uh, that's fortunate. Yeah, that really helped us, I guess, get through a lot of um, just the beginning of it. And then once we kind of figured out, hey, who are our close friends who have cars that trust us and that uh, trust us to be safe mm-hmm. and trust us to shoot their cars and not, you know, I guess... Fuck around but, yeah, much, just yeah. mess around. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did that. We shot our friends' cars, and then it kind of snowballed after that. Once the world started opening up more, you know, first it was Arizona, so we started shooting in Arizona a lot, and then this, you know, whatever state started opening up. We we we've been traveling so much. I've been flying literally every single weekend. This past weekend, I was in Texas. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Grid Life, actually in New Orleans. There's a grid life in New Orleans yes. tomorrow? What the fuck? Really? Yeah, is it like one of their like regional ones or like a festival? It's um a new thing. It's something called Double Double Dare Drift that they're doing, which uh-huh. is you've seen so much tra- tra- traditional drifting, uh-huh. right? You've seen Formula Drift, you've seen D1, all of that. Grid life, what they're actually going to do is they're going to try to get these people to drive closer together as a team. You know? Oh, okay. So it's so like they're not, they're not racing each other. No. Instead, it's a t- it's a team sport. Exactly. And is it a competition? Yes. So uh, you win as a team. You win as a team, uh-huh. and um, it, it, it's uh, the track layout. It's uh, New Orleans Motorsport Park, and it it just basically allows you to create your own track. Right, it's just like this big open place with a bunch of ways for the track. Oh yeah, because you can make like all different configurations, yeah. right? Yeah, and then okay. what you could do is you could like start <clears throat> your drift off together, and then you can like split off. 
oh. then join back together or you oh, could do like a Russian that's roulette. Like, oh, interesting. You're yeah. doing like a, yeah, see, you're so doing like bottom, a routine. It really is. Left? Yeah. Yeah. So you could drift. There's a million configurations. Right yeah. There, you know, on where you, where you can. You know what it reminds me of? The fucking jet boats in the, in, yeah. the, in the carved out, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, Where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. just a grid of canals and they just do crazy routes through it. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. It really is like. This will add to the whole synchronized driving thing people say, but yeah. that's a I, that's a cool way to. They're really leaned the into the figure skating aspect of it. I mean, fuck <laughs> it, that's that's rad. Yeah, it's a I, team effort. I mean, I love traditional drifting, and I know you love it too. I love yeah. Formula Drift, and Formula Drift is my home without a doubt. You know, that's where I started my career, and I <clears> I still sh shoot it. This weekend, I was shooting it, um, but. You know, this is kind of a cool evolution mm -hmm. of this oh, thing yeah. that we know yeah. as drifting. Because how cool would it be just to have like three, four, five identical cars? You know, they're all two hundred horsepower, and then they are driving inches away. From yeah. You know that. Well, that's another another thing you bring up. Identical cars. I think spec drift could be funny, fun as well. I mean, That'd I don't know cool. if it necessarily would be fun for the spectators, but it would definitely be fun for the drivers. Being able to to see who was the best in this in exactly the same car. I mean, but that's kind of the f that's the fun thing is you can do anything. Yeah, you know, there's no motor regulations, there's no chassis regulations. Yeah. it's just safety. So, what right? kind of folks are showing up to the grid life? Is it like the Pro Two guys that are doing it, or is it like Turk Some, and well, Forsberg this, and all these guys? This one, I think Forsberg and Turk are going to come <clears throat> and uh, check it out. Um, but. Uh, a lot of people in the local area, as far as Texas and Atlanta, I think they're going to show up to just try it out. This is going to be the first time they're going to do this, which uh, I'm really excited to to see. Well, yeah. Chris, see, Chris and his folks at yeah. Grid Life are really nice people, and they're always trying to find new and interesting ways to make motorsport a little different and a little more interesting. Uh, as well as to make it a good spectator sport for people who come. Is there any like, is there like a camping aspect to this one too, or is it really just motorsport? I think so. I mean, you know, we actually worked together for the first time at Grid Life at Gingerman. Yeah, yeah, when we yeah. were chasing drift cars. Yeah. 2015, maybe? Yeah, and you had a, like a. One of the uh, M2 press I think it was cars. A BMW with M2 M3? press yeah. No, no, that, the year that? before that oh, okay. was an M2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and. Um, that was actually the first time I was on uh, your show. Yeah, we did a fucking. Do we do a podcast there no, too? No, I, I just think the, I we think, just made a video. Uh, yeah, we just made a video. Just chasing drift cars. Chasing drift cars, and it was just kind of like a different subject. A fun video. Yeah, actually. super fun, and just something that you traditionally just wouldn't do. It was know? fun because you sent me the finished pictures, which I then. I kind of shutter snapped in right at the moments that they happened. That made it fun for me. And also you were laughing. Like, your laugh was, like, hilarious. It, you know, that and I think um, part of it is that when have you ever seen drifting that close? No, I know. Like, you don't. You are. I was going really fast. You're in their really pocket. close. Like, <laughs> yeah, you are really at their close. door. They've done it. I think whoever has taken up that mantle might have seen me doing that that year and has since replicated it but at the time that was about the closest i'd ever been to <laughs> from that angle well the thing about it is um part like the fact that grid life allows for that yeah is the big deal grid life is just is exactly what you said it's a festival right and it's just a, a way for us car guys to just relax I feel yeah. like, and it's still car things going on. Yeah, right. A lot of times when you go to these competitions, it can be stressful a little bit. You know, it's 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 actually, you know, people are actually pushing super hard. There's uh, um, people getting mad at each other, or whatever. At Grid Life, it's more just hey, we're going out and driving, and it's cool cars that show up from all over. Yeah, and there's the music aspect of it. Unfortunately, this year. You know they can't do that. Yeah, that was a bummer. And the camping aspect of it—it's just a good time of in general. Like it worked better, I think, at the at Ginger Man and the smaller tracks. Like Road Atlanta was like too big and had too many rules. They wouldn't let us do some of the stuff that other smaller tracks would do. And it was the even though there was like twice as many people, they were spread out to all these like nooks of the track. Ginger Man like made a tent city. Oh yeah. And because of that, it was like. Like party time. It had a sense. That's the only one I went to, but it had a sense of like friends having the most fun at a track that you could possibly do. Like it felt safe, but it didn't feel restrained or boring or stuffy. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was just such a great combination of 
of time attack drifting there's a sense of play about it you know yeah. the fact that you guys could chase those cars be close to like yeah these guys are smart they know what they're doing and they're getting rad content and having a good time and without everyone seems to have a good time and then the drivers can talk to all the fans it's it's awesome it was good well with that said my favorite video from good life that i shot was still when i handed you the camera um in atlanta and we were going around in golf carts do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, Larry, I've lost all control. And we're like bumping <laughs> other people. And I kid you not, you know the, who Steph Papadakis is? The golf cart is. takeovers were ridiculous. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, Steph's been on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Steph is seriously, I, I call him Spider-Man now because I don't know if you remember, he was jumping from roof of golf cart to golf cart oh, yeah. while we were going downhill. Oh, and yeah. While we were pushing I our, forgot that that was you, him. You could probably yeah, like pull the, up the part great of that race video car builder. If you, if you just search <laughs> like, Grid Life uh, on YouTube. We can't uh, play YouTube oh, videos. Never mind. Yeah. No it's YouTube a thing. Videos. But anyways. It sucks. I know, it sucks. Uh, but... Um, if you guys have a t chance to check it out, just search up <laughs> Grid Life, Larry Chen, Hoonigan. Golf carts. Yeah, golf carts. Golf cart mayhem. <laughs> golf carts. Yeah. Just the golf cart. And they, I think somebody within the organization in Road Atlanta specifically may have aided and abetted that because I do have a recollection that we stole the golf carts for that mayhem at Gingerman. But at Road Atlanta, someone lined them up and left them with the keys in them for us to like just find them. It it was like twenty five or thirty. It was a golf lot of carts. golf carts. It was a lot of golf carts. And it was a lot of golf carts. It was absolute mayhem. And you know that that video, I, I it was the whole party bullies thing, right? It was we bad. would go from party to party, and then we would play flip cup at their area. And then afterwards, they would just smash the tables and destroy the. The smashing camp. of the tables in hindsight might have been a little over the line. I, 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 I have a couple of those in that video. Yeah. And it's hilarious. It's just too much. It's like you're like fun Vikings. You know, yeah, you it was a lot of fun. Right in, and they're like, "Oh my god, the drivers yeah. came to see you. Like, we're drinking your beer. Like, great." And then you leave, like, "We're out of beer. <laughs> <laughs> we're out of beer, and all of our plastic tables are destroyed." <laughs> yeah. But they have such a story. Yeah. yeah, it was a good time. That was a very, very good time. I'm glad that video was. You could we could deduct all the expenses of that. Yeah, <laughs> Fortunately, we could write that one off. Um, so yeah, in terms of what we've been doing, we've been shooting as much as we can, and as the world is opening up and as uh, events are happening, you know, we're starting to tackle those, and then now it's getting to the point where we're getting back to working with the manufacturers. Yeah. Dude, this weird, I, I, I keep getting phone calls and I'm such a fucking moron. I couldn't put it together until very recently. I've gotten like several phone calls to come to private viewings of cars. Uh -huh. And when I got the first one and it was for like the new Maserati uh, sports car, I was like, oh, well, that's a thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. But then it was like, would you like to come see the new Civic? And I'm like, why am I and I, I and I, I called the person back and I was like, is this a driving thing? And he was like, no, no, it's just to see it. And I was like, is this a thing? He's like, it's because I guess because well, there's no L.A. Auto Show. Right. So they're doing they're doing this instead of the L.A. Auto Show. So I'm probably going to get like lots of calls from people about coming to see lots of random cars in like individual showrooms around L.A. Right. Huh. That's going to suck. Well, I, I think um, I've seen some journalists, they get uh, like a house for yeah, the yeah. day, right? Well, that's what Porsche was doing. So Porsche, rather than flying journalists around, they would rent a house and they'd have two press cars and two journalists at a time would come in to like a mostly empty living room and sit across the living room from each other with masks on and watch a Zoom tech presentation and then you get the car for the day and then you bring it back to the house. So that's what they're doing and they're doing those regionally instead of flying people to fucking Tenerife or whatever to drive the newest, you know, Panamera. I'm going to miss those press trips for <laughs> sure. I love press trips so much and I've been lucky to just be on all of these weird ones that this is so great. I mean, just to be, to be able to experience um, just the culture yeah. aspect of it. You know, the cars are cool. Uh, we we see so many cars. But. I've been to some dope ass places. Unfortunately, not for very long usually. But mm -hmm. like like if you're going on a on a shooting gig and you, and you're you know you're there for the whole week or whatever, that's G. Is a journalist? Don't get me wrong. I'm not like complaining. But like you know, 
20 hours of travel, you fly in, you know, you get a workout in, you go to sleep, you go to the dinner, and then you drive the car all day, and then you fly out the night. You don't, it, you could be in a hotel almost anywhere. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter that you're Pretty much. in Portugal, except the booze you drink there is like, oh, yes, I am in Portugal. But besides <laughs> that, like, you could be almost fucking anywhere. The hamon, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. It, but it's on a time, on a time scale, I'm happy. I'm happy to not take those trips and instead have the new car dropped off at my house or go to a place in LA and pick it up for 24 hours. Like, because I've only got seven days. And yes. so if I can get my video done in a couple hours in the morning instead of flying to the other side of the world, the audience doesn't give a shit, yeah. really. It's not going to affect the view counts if I was in Germany driving this thing. It's just, here's the car, you know? Yeah. So I just assume do it here. Yeah. It's, I'm not being lazy. It's just like I don't have the time. You know what I mean? To, the time to do that trip doesn't come out of my work. It comes out of my family time. I so. mean, in essence, now I think uh, you'll get a lot pu purer reviews, mm -hmm. right? Because you actually get more time with the car and it's solo time because a lot of these times when you're actually out doing these trips, you have to share the car yeah. with someone else, yeah. right? And a lot of times, sometimes it just doesn't align, you know, with the way you drive or the yeah. way you want to drive or the way you want to feel out the car. Uh, you definitely have a yes, no list. Yeah. You soon, you know, <laughs> you find it, you go, hey, I'm going to come, but who's, let me see, let me see that list. Let me well, see that list. Who's, who's on that? Okay. I want to drive with this person or this person. <laughs> I definitely will not drive with that person. And they try to make that hap work, you know? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's funny because I didn't have that when I started. I'm, just, I'm sure it's the same way with you. But uh, now it's like, yeah, I have Yeah, it takes list. time to develop that <laughs> you list. You know that In list. In the beginning, yeah. no. You, you drive, okay, yeah. whatever. And then you're like, what the yeah. fuck? Don't say whatever anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that's the one of very few good things about COVID. Everyone gets their own car for sure now. No for car sure. sharing anymore. Sure. And it's yeah. clean. Very clean. And, <laughs> yeah, they make a big deal out of, the, out of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I yeah, that, the cars are one thing I've not freaked out about over that. I do. I've I don't know about you, but I guess not you because you're traveling so much still. But I managed to fill the non the time that I spent traveling last year. I managed to fill with local stuff. Yeah, like I'm just as busy, if not busier. But it's just all here, pretty yeah, much. And we have a lot of local stuff too. It's pretty easy to um, do here. Yeah, but part of it, and that's why we're based out of LA. Yeah. You know, if if we didn't have to be here, we'd probably be somewhere else. But the point is that car culture, for me at least, the aftermarket modified car culture is a lot of it is based out in LA or SoCal, or just a little a couple hour drive or, away. Or driving distance, yeah. yeah. Arizona, for off-road trucks, it's yeah. Arizona, Arizona or Nevada, San Diego, Nevada, whatever, yeah, yeah. or NorCal, yeah. whatever. Um, with that said, you know, we, we still, since we're not traveling internationally, we're traveling at least. Yeah. Um, you fill the time the with US. those shit. Yeah. It's like when you it's like you quit smoking cigarettes, and and, it's, and and when you quit smoking, you're like, wow, I have a fucking hour in my day that I am not smoking cigarettes. Like, I need, I have this hour I need to fill with something. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, can we talk about the Nissan? Yeah. So um, just a couple hours ago, I asked my very good friend at Nissan if they would allow me to show some of the photos that I've been able to get. Um, so the story is this, and this is so fully like exclusive, exclusive first time look mm. at these photos. Uh, and I'm, I'm just so happy to be able to show them on your show. I just shot them last week. Okay. Okay. And uh, they reached out to me actually around Pike's Peak time. And they're like, hey, we have this new car. They didn't even tell me what it is. You know, uh, we have this new car and we want you to photograph it. And we think that you are like a part of this community, you know, and y you would appreciate it. Of course, you know. Now that we know you, what it is, yeah, they you, were definitely right. Yeah, you read between <laughs> the lines, all that, whatever. Uh, we think you're a Sienna kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if they butter you maxima. up and you get there and it's the new fucking Equinox, yeah, you're yeah. like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, Zach, recently you grab, you I did grab a the hibiki. I, will you throw it on the wide, a wide, and grab the hibiki? Yeah, but let me. You want me to pull yeah, it up yeah. now, or you want to? You want to keep it? Uh, build, give the, the suspense. Get, build the suspense. Yeah, we could build well, the you, suspense. You want We need the hibiki. It's on top of the bar. You don't have to dig. And then, and then I'll continue with <laughs> keep, no. The keep suspense. going. Keep going. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just these are 
my dream shoots. Like these are the ones that I want. These are the ones I want at first. You know, like yeah. I want to be the one to reveal it to the world. Uh, this so my friend Jonathan at Nissan, he's like, hey, the the Z Proto is coming to U.S. shores, and you will be the first person to lay your eyes on it and use your camera on this thing. And I want you to sh photograph it in and around LA and basically show it in natural light, show it uh, in daytime and nighttime and just do your thing because I want you to show the American audience, which is the biggest Z audience, biggest Z enthusiast space, um, what this car looks like and how beautiful it is. And let me tell you, the moment they unloaded that thing, oh my God. Really? Like it, it just, it's it's just like that retro mod look. I'm trying I'm just, to get my hand around the square mouth. That's where I'm like well, this angle you, 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 we're showing right now. You the, have to for the video version, Zach. You want to pull it up full screen for them. For those of us joining us on audio, you may want to come over to the YouTube version of the show yeah. for this because yeah. we're talking about photographs today. So yeah. it's bad anytime I come on your show because we're talking about uh, photos. And we've it's very made visual. this a video show. We have yeah. provided the means for free for anyone to join in on the photo discussion. We're doing our best, folks. But this is a side profile shot. Yeah, this of the is a side Z profile. Um, you know, may not show off so much of it, but if you, as you scroll through it, I try to show that the grill actually has detail, and it's it's a uh, so kind of. This like is a my throwback. favorite angle. The rear three yeah. quarter, I think, is my favorite angle. I've got you got some some Jaguar F type yeah. in there. Little Aston Martin, maybe? I, I think there's a lot of Z32, Z31 in the rear, mm -hmm. and then oh, in yeah. just the quarter. The black bar across the across the, tr yep. the, the yep. trunk there. And I actually had a chance to park this next to uh, Chris Forsberg's 280, and man, the the, the fact that it it, uh, it looks similar, you know, just the way the taillights are configured and the way that there is that um, area, that black area. Yeah. The lower side skirt to me says Aston Martin, mm -hmm. uh, as do the wheels, actually. The wheels, I almost see Lamborghini in the wheels. Well, kind of has that bend it, in the door that yeah. reminds you of the Vantage a bit. <clears throat> yeah, you yeah. That kind of stretched feeling of like, yeah. like it was a smaller car and then the wheels are pushing out from the center. These are complimentary terms, by yes. the way, to be talking well, about a I, Nissan in these terms. I, I cannot wait for you to see it in person. Because you know what I like what they did was that flat black wind, the flat back window, that's yes. very 280ZX, yes. right? Yeah, so... Uh, you'll see later in some of the photos that um, it there's some you know 240z styling cues there's some um, 370 but th the point is that this is um, updated in my eyes in terms of like look and yeah. then just the specs that they have released uh, uh, the the fact that it's manual and it's twin turbo twin turbo so is it going to be the infinity like red sport engine is Who that knows? basically what we're talking about here I I don't know. That would make logical sense, wouldn't it? I mean, from what they've said, potentially, you know? I see the Q, I see the headlight. The square mouth makes no sense until you look at a picture of a very of a 70s one. You go, oh, then you go, oh, and now I see it. Yeah. It's and like if you remove the metal exactly. bumper. Exactly. If right? you remove the Thank metal you, bumper Zach. on my 240Z, it's exactly that. It's yeah, square. Yeah. Um, but, but the rest of the car is very round. That's why it's like it really stands out that it is square. Yeah, and I think you have to really look at it in person. Um, but I, like again, with these photos, I tried my best uh, to to convey that. It's roughly the same size as the three seventy, right? It's uh, a little bigger, a little just bigger, a little bit. Did you get to drive it? I did not okay. get to drive it. But it it's, it drives, right? It's a functional car. Well, that's how we got it around. Yeah. LA. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you could. I mean, it's photo shoot. Yeah. You could trailer it. But yeah, this angle right here, night shot profile, right side. The way that that light catches the top of the rear fender, that's very good. Yeah, and, and it's just, I think so much of it is is um, a lot of people said when they look at the release photos initially from Japan, they made they try to make it too perfect. You know, mm -hmm. they try to get rid of reflections, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's something that they want to convey the color perfectly. Yeah, press you photos know? have a look. Yeah, press photos have a look, and they did their justice. But my point is that look, dirty downtown yeah. LA, gritty, but look at this sleek, beautiful thing that's new. That's, yeah, you know, that that's kind of like 
that's I guess it's not the Halo car because the GTR is the Halo Stay car. Stay there. But that's, that's, this picture is interesting because this they've done a really neat trick with this black rear valance here. Especially you notice it in the in the nighttime shots where they where the way they chop the yellow at a forty five degree angle with the black that makes it visually look like the 240Z because the 240's body actually comes in like that. Yes. But they can't do that on a modern car. No, no. So and they made it black to make it kind of disappear at, I, at night. I think they did the same thing a little bit with the, the carbon side skirt. Yeah, yeah, and actually with the with the uh, the black on the silver on top of the C pillar, mm -hmm. it lowers the car visually. Well, mm -hmm. that actually it was the original like drip rail uh -huh. on the 240Z, but they've continued using or, or they they recreated it, but as a styling cue. Mm. Yeah. It's cool. It's it's pretty cool looking, man. I think I need to see that the square mouth in person to really get that. But Yeah. But other than that, like I think it isn't. It's an attractive shape. Yeah, and and I I mean, what can it's people exciting. do now? You know, in terms of car manufacturers, like how crazy can you really get? Uh, unless you're talking about seven figures, exactly. you know, the, uh, like, the seven figure cars are out of fucking uh, control. Other uh, than that, unless you're talking about something like the uh, 4GT that was super <laughs> groundbreaking, and there's just like holes in the back <laughs> where it, when you're it talking about venturi make, tunnels it's yeah, like, yeah it just doesn't make sense and and it's crazy that a modern car like that could could exist um just like the 510 it's a pedestrian car that most people can afford that are into that that want to buy this kind of car you know they'll be able to afford it versus something like a halo car like like the Ford GT whatever how many people yeah. can afford those you know I think it's 400 it, 499 I mean it's it's impressive that they can make cars look as different as they can still yeah. there's so many rules How close is the Z Proto to a production look Um the well the, I don't think they've released that yet but um hopefully it's close <laughs> <laughs> it, But know? it did like I mean obviously it's uh it, yeah, did they give you? I mean, sometimes they they are pretty on the nose with it, right? Yeah, and I, I feel sometimes like, they're like, yeah, this is what the production cars are like. And sometimes they're like, we're still working on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good angle. I, the I front like three it's quarters a, nice. It's a little further off versus like what they had before. For example, like with the IDX, uh -huh. I think. Uh, versus with, with that, like they they showed it and then they stopped promoting it. This, they're pushing so hard on this thing. You know, well, there's um, so few manual, you know, kind of analog there's, there's, sports there's cars left. There's, there's very few. There's like, there's I think so there's few. there's 30 manual transmission cars available right now across all spectrums and genres. So the crazy thing about this car is uh, when it comes out, it's the, the last car to be turbo and manual um, from the Nissan lineup was a S15. Sylvia. In like 2002, 2003 probably. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, that was really? so long ago. So yeah. long or, ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were like 1999, yeah. right? Yeah. To, 2000, to 2002, to I think. Yeah. yeah. So That's that was the last one that was turbo. <laughs> what have they been doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just drove uh, Rutledge's R33 oh, that Sean had. Um, yeah. Really another nice. Grimace. Really Another nice. purple. It was purple, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like the, it's not the lighter purple, it's the darker one that almost right. looks black. Is that midnight purple? Yeah, that's the original midnight purple, and I think that is the most, one of the most common colors on the R33. The 34's purple got more purple and less black. Well, also more um, like a chameleon color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What a great car though. Yeah. R33, so good. So this is an interesting shot because it shows with the headlights off, um, and then that gives you more the 240Z look. You know, it kind of gives you that sugar scoop. Yeah, when the headlights are off, it you, looks, it looks more, more like, black and less chrome. Yes, and that's it looks where you get that look from, like the 240Z. Yeah, yeah. I do like that the lower window trim is blacked out. I like the black mirror that works. It's not bad. I got. Mm -hmm. I just need. A, I'm a wait and see on the square mouth in person. But I trust your judgment. If you say it's good looking, I'm with it. You, you know, and the thing is, I guess it's probably not good to trust my judgment because I'm a Z guy. But I'm an all car guy. You know, yeah, I have Z all rules. cars. 
I, I just, I'm a lover of cars, you know, and that's what I'm, I'm so lucky that I'm able to do this. I, you know, I'll photograph your, your cars like it's my own car. You know, I want to show the, them in their best light. I want to show them uh, in the, in the best shape possible. You know, yeah. I like to bring out all the cool little details, um, and the textures and the colors and. That's, I guess, why I'm so happy, I'm lucky that Nissan kind of trusted me to really spend my <clears throat> time with this car. Were there interior shots as well, or was it all exterior? So uh, the interior, I am i don't know. I wouldn't say if it wasn't done yet, but it's one of the things where I think I'm going to wait okay. to photograph the production model of the interior. Still a little prototype-y? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I think it's maybe maybe some things were off. Mm. Yeah, and that's probably why they didn't I mean, actually want me to. Maybe, yeah. yeah. It's fucking yeah. normal. That's yeah. how prototypes work. Yeah, it's exactly. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, I'm sure we've, we've had to deal with so many uh, prototypes where, like, Dude, I get notes not. in the car. I get right. notes like, this is a pre-production prototype, like certain items, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, all right, whatever. It's not yeah. that big of a deal. See, that... The rear angle looks so Z32. Yes. So yes. Z32. Z32. It's amazing they managed Z31. to fit that because the Z32 looks the least like any of the other Zs. Yeah. And it's, it's like, okay, well, if we're going to heritage this up, like what detail can we get from the Z32 that uh, works on other, the other, the, you know, the cab rear size uh, style of Z as well? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, so, but the Z32 kind of rules is by the like, way. Yeah, it's the, the ZX. kind of rule. Yeah, it's so cool. It's the two. The, I don't. Not. I'm not really about the two plus two, but the short. The short one. I'm about. Well, this one was so groundbreaking. You know, rear steer. Yeah. Twin turbo. Um, the VG is a little tough motor to work on. You know, there's not much room. But could you imagine driving that back in 1989, 1990? Bro, it was when fast I was in, too. Like, so fast. It was like, yeah, when I was in middle school, the these were the shit. These well, fucking mobs. It yeah. kind of fucked up the Corvette market for a little bit because it showed up and it won a bunch of contests, mm -hmm. won a bunch of magazine yeah. tests. 300 horsepower um, before the Supra, before, I mean, the GTR wasn't even here in the U.S., yeah. You know, what else was there around that time? The Honestly, R7 though, wasn't even I out. like this car very much, but Nissan should have just sold the fucking Skyline here in left-hand drive. I mean, yeah. the engineering was done. Yeah. It's I so, mean, we, in hindsight, how fucking dumb is it that they didn't, you know, you have a, I had a Skyline, yeah. you have a Skyline, like, why didn't they sell this here? What are you doing? Your know. best I, product. And the thing is, <laughs> I drive that thing as my daily driver. Good. And it's like so comfortable and it's so it, the ac blows so cold and it's so awesome to just drive it like a just a normal car yeah and skyline's the, not a sacrifice you no. don't have to you don't have to suffer to drive a no, skyline no, not at all they're comfy yeah even the r33 i when i drove rut's car i was like oh shit more leg room yeah the r33 is five inches longer mm. and all almost all of it goes right in the leg room it rules yeah, it's, it's really, really comfy. So recently I did a video with the Hoonigans where I raced my bone stock R32 uh, GTR versus a 2020 Nissan Maxima. Uh-huh. And I mean, if you think Love about it. it, like- I bet the, you won. I bet did you, you win? Did. I bet you did. Barely. <laughs> but yeah, but still. Still, I mean, okay, good for Nissan and the Maxima, but on, Z on the show that Zach makes, uh, Proving Grounds on NBC Sports, uh -huh. uh, they race. Did this come out yet? It did. This was last season, right? Didn't you have the R32 last season? Yeah. I'm not giving away no, a plot, yeah. right? Yeah, it's fine. They had an R32 stock, Lee Keen driving. Yeah. Was faster around the track than an F type V6S coupe. No new, way. New. A new one. Wow. <laughs> I mean, but you can't discount. Your skyline is awesome. Oh, I love that. Thing. And it's California legal. Yeah, I just smogged it. I took it to a smog place, Whoa. and the guy, it blew his <laughs> mind. He's like, what is this? You know, yeah. I, 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 I even called Sean, um, and I'm like, hey, I'm here. You know, he doesn't even know what buttons to click That's so on funny. the smog machine. And Did I you make read, a video of this? Because you I should, should have. have. I should have. You I could read. have a prank show just <laughs> driving a skyline to smog shops. Be like, run it, bitch. Yeah. They'll be like, yeah. no, this isn't even legal. Be like, run it. <laughs> well, I posted I posted the test, and it's clean. It yeah. runs so clean. 1990. Dude, it see, so it's clean. not like they couldn't have fucking run this motor in America in 1990. Yeah. They don't have to modify it. When they do carb, they don't do that much yeah. to the engine. 
Well, yeah. yeah I mean, just just uh, for my car, they just did like a restrictor, so I can't put diesel in the gas area. <laughs> okay. Did they um, add that? And they go, now you know, yeah. we're putting this in, so they, you can't put diesel they in the added car. And that. you're like, no way, man, really? And like, sorry. Like, like oh. literally the thing in the fuel tank, yes, so you can't a, accidentally There's an the aluminum <laughs> thing in there, and the hole I is the it. size we of the We are so it. Yeah. stupid as a country that this is what we need. It's like, not like you need to pass emissions, or you need to pass fuel economy standards. It's, you need to idiot-proof this. <laughs> and you're like, but I just... I just went out of my way to import this legendary, you think I don't fucking know what kind of gas this thing takes? But the next guy, well, fuck you. Like, oh God, I hate that system. <laughs> exactly. What else do they make you do? Um, we, I think they added one more cat. Uh-huh. Which... Did, it, did you notice any effect in your performance at all? Well, well the thing is, um, it has a larger aftermarket exhaust, just a cat back on it. That's the only thing that I don't think that's stuck. Um, the air box is still stock. Yeah. Sean is all Sean is gung ho yeah. about his stock air boxes. Sean will go on and fucking on about how he can make six hundred horsepower reliable all day long with a stock air box and anyone who puts an intake on is a goddamn moron. He'll yeah. do hours on that. Well they and then I think what else? Um they, they test the EVAP, they mm -hmm. test all of these things basically just to prove that this one is world worthy. And yeah, that's pretty so. Much it. Uh, so in reality, it's much more of a basic roadworthiness test that, frankly, most vintage cars don't get. <laughs> yes, yeah, that costs ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. It's a scam. It's a yeah. financial scam, basically. It, it is a scam, and I mean, what what do we do? You know, like I I read um, mm -hmm. a thing. I think uh, Doug Demero mentioned it recently. He's like. You know, I'm an adult. I pay taxes. I follow the rules. You know, and plus we're in the public eye. I gotta follow the rules. You know, I'm not going to break the rules. I'm I'm, I'm going to try my best to follow the rules. I drive it all day, every day, in front of cops. Nobody says anything. You know, because it's a fully legal California car. I mean, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's great. I'm it's not going to say anything car. about my cars that are registered at my vacation home. Sorry. It's a gorgeous I, color, too, Larry. Hey, if, I wish if I, if I had a vacation home, maybe. Nobody gives a shit about my Delica. Right. Nobody fucking yeah, yeah, cares. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, they they you they actually uh, there's um some local police in Venice who've uh -huh. seen that who've seen cars in my garage and they think that little van is just the fucking coolest thing <laughs> in the world. That everyone something about that van is so charming to everybody. Yeah, that that it's my wife's daily driver, and she took my press car home. I got a Lincoln Aviator. She took it home and left that here. But she, I have to I have to pry that thing from her fucking cold I dead love hands. That. I love it's that. The best she loves van driving. ever. If you want, if you ever want something funky, funky to shoot, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, we can yeah, do yeah. that. I mean, that could be one of the cars It'll of be that fun. lineup. Yeah, <laughs> in, the, in the justification, <laughs> yeah. For, yeah, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, thirty-year-old van. Yeah, <laughs> nobody likes that van but me. Everyone else thinks it's dumb. Um, but yeah, just I mean, if you want to, oh, that's a the good photos, one. Yeah, just, I like that uh, one. Yeah, I just wanted to show it in normal scenarios when you're shooting at night like this mm -hmm. uh fairly it's urban setting mm -hmm. uh neon lights in the background for night a fairly well-lit scene yeah are you shooting long exposure on sticks or is the iso uh, up high enough that you can just handheld rip with this that's the thing is with these modern cameras it's insane you know what I, i'm shooting with three hundred thousand iso or oh whatever God. i just posted a video on my instagram of me using um, my wendy x mark three and shooting at ten thousand iso and it's so no, clear. No grain, not just I good. Mean, barely anything. Really? It's usable still. Yeah. And um, even blown up at full size, it's not so bad. But um, so I, right now, I'm using two cameras. Okay, I'm using the Canon R5, which is their new mirrorless camera, uh -huh. and I'm so in love with this thing. It's so good. It's 45 megapixels, and I use that when I kind of need to slow down a little bit. Because it's not a very good action camera. Uh huh. Yeah. Not as responsive. Does, does, no, does it it's do not burst? so much that. It's it's more the fact that I can't. If I can't see the subject with my eyes, I feel like I just cannot get those decisive moments that are milliseconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll get there soon. Maybe even in the next generation. And by that you mean looking through and look at an L C D screen versus through a, an yes. actual viewfinder. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like the R five, it does have an electronic viewfinder, 
but there's just a little bit of a disconnect when it comes to just high speed action, mm. you know? When the car is slower, or when it's just sitting there, or if it's a subject, for example, even if I'm shooting my family, my kids, I'll use the R5, and oh my god, it's so good. It is so good, and it really is the How much is the R5? Um, it's about... Four thousand dollars, I think. Oh, can you get is that? Is it? it can you get a picture of it, Zach? Is it like little, like yeah, the A7, uh, it's, like it's little? It's pretty small. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see how much. Oh, it, EOS R5. Right? Oh, I was, I was close. Yeah. Oh, it's 30, still a DSLR. 30, n well, no, it's not a DSLR because there's no mirror in it. Oh. You know, it's not a oh, S single a, L lens. Right. Reflex. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. So, so it is a, it is a DSLR it's a, it's a, it's style a body. That's what that's what it's called. It's a mirrorless camera. Um, and the viewfinder is electronic. So you're oh, looking at a screen when you oh. put your eye to it, yeah. So, I, for some reason, was just, I interchanged mirrorless with sort of point and sh high right. end point and shoots, which was a mistake. Yeah, well, those are also mirrorless. Right, well, yeah, that's yeah, why I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. know about this in between interchangeable lens right. joint. So this is still, I think, their kind of prosumer model. Fucking 4K for the body, though, wow. This is still prosumer. I mean, yeah, this is yeah, 5D. Yeah. Uh, territory, you know. This so then, is, what is the advantage of a mirrorless over an SLR if you're going to pay four thousand um, dollars? What's the advantage of yeah? Mirrorless? What's the advantage? It's lighter weight uh -huh. because there's no mirror. It's smaller. It's more compact. Is and it potentially, it's significantly lighter and smaller? It's lighter, and the main thing also is that you can have the lens physically smaller because the ratio of the lens to to the film plane. Right, you know, uh, yes, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. There's no room for a mirror. It doesn't need to have a mirror to go up and down. So the actual end of the lens is so close. Yeah, because you're eliminating actually, like an inch and a half of moving mirror. Exactly, exactly. Oh, that makes so much more sense. So how are you? how is your focal length affected? Like, what is the ratio compared, like a 50 millimeter prime on a 35 millimeter DSLR, what would what would the equivalent be on this? Well, so the difference is that now with all the EF lenses that I have from Canon with my um, DSLR cameras, mm -hmm. I can use them with an adapter, mm -hmm. but you can also get dedicated lenses, which is called the, like the RF line. Uh, that is actually a lot smaller. So for example, you see the Leica cameras, right? Yes. You see even the 50 millimeter F.95 or the F.1 is tiny. Yeah, it's like three quarters of an exactly. inch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why is because it it's so close to the actual film plane, the ratio of it doesn't need to be that big. That's so interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why, for example, my 400 millimeter um, F2.8 is so big is because it needs, it just, you know, that's just the way it is. It's you just math. It's literally physics. math. Yeah, it's you just can't math. go around yeah. physics. Yeah, yeah. But now when you look at the new lenses that are coming out dedicated for this camera, hmm. they're way smaller. How interesting. Way I smaller. Fuck with that. I mean, I got to, can I bum yours for like a couple of days? Yeah, you could probably. We'll just, uh, we'll just yeah. go out. I'll just come out with you and yeah. shoot something yeah, together and I want to play. How about, yeah, how about the next time we shoot together, you know, you can check it out. We can, you can, did you see my Ferrari? We can shoot my Ferrari. Yeah, let's shoot your Ferrari. It's black. It's all black. That's I, the, I don't care. I'll well, actually, anything. it's probably good, right? Because you can get with with the mirrorless. Can you get a richness and uh, what ha what um what am I think? What's the fucking word, Larry? What? Uh, you, you mean um, <sighs> dynamic see, range? Or? Thank you, dynamic yeah. range. Yeah, yeah. To get to get blacks. So the R five dynamic range is unbelievable for the size of the megapixel. So the physical size of the pixel on the sensor is still pretty small because it's so packed in there, right? Mm. Um, and then, like for example, with my normal cameras that I'm shooting with, that's not mirrorless, the DSLRs, the 1DX Mark III, which we actually helped launch for Canon. That feel, uh, that's gotta feel pretty cool. How long until you have a Larry Chen signature camera? <laughs> like that's kinda gotta be, does anybody have a signature camera? Has uh, anyone ever had one? I don't know. I've I mean, never heard of that know. before. Yeah. But that would be extremely sick. If you had a 1DX uh -huh. Mark III, yeah. maybe the Mark IV, whatever, yeah. and it, you got to like a color scheme mm -hmm. and a lens package, right. and it had your signature like embossed, I mean, that yeah. would be the g well, shit ever. I, w I mean, I, I would even know 
exactly like what extra specs I would ask for. You know, I, I've could, even I told, see this commanding a massive <laughs> premium. I've, I've told the Canon engineers what I exactly want in a camera. And yeah, like, but we need to talk to Canon marketing. Ah, <laughs> That's, we need to get Canon marketing on the I line like because I think a Chen edition camera, like a motorsports camera, would be extremely sick. Yeah, and people would so. buy it. Dude, Magnus Walker sold every one of those steering wheels. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love Magnus, and right. I love the Mo- Momo Prototipo steering yeah. wheel. And there is nothing wrong with a Moto- Momo Prototipo steering wheel with a double-wrapped rim. That's a perfect steering wheel to use in air-cooled Porsches. Yeah. You couldn't give me a Magnus Walker signed wheel. And I love Magnus, and I told <laughs> him this shit to his face. But he sold like 500 of those steering wheels. Right. You could sell a Larry Chen edition camera at an extraordinary premium mm, for maybe. for charity, for your for fucking cash, for whatever. It'd be great. Maybe It'd be great. I, I think maybe uh, my edition would be like a like the entry level version, but with some perks that that kind of gets you into car photography, yeah. right? Because uh, one of the things your that, seminars are the shit. Well, that that's what we you and I what we're trying to do is we're in, trying to inspire the next generation of yeah. car enthusiasts, right? And then. Uh, for me, it's so much about the visual side um, uh, of these cars. You know, Th- that's why I have R32, not because it's fast. Obviously, if you guys watch that video of me racing the Nissan Maxima, it's not that fast, <laughs> you know, in modern terms. But um, the look of it, yeah, it's so iconic. Yeah. And the shape and for normal people, when they look at it, they just think it's a Nissan Sentra. They're like, this fucking weirdo in a Nissan Sentra is driving on the right side. You know, just, yeah. It's it's, it's even weirder when you drive one that's not a Skyline. When you drive, like, you ever drive, like, a Nissan Cifero or some shit, and it really <laughs> looks like a Maxima from right. the 80s? Right, like, right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> um, yeah, no, exactly. It's it's an aesthetic. It's In L.A. especially, a car is an outfit that you put on Yeah. Um, as part of it, and like there's people that are like too masculine to admit something like that like no 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 my car is not an outfit not an outfit it's not it's not saying nothing about me you know what i mean and like meanwhile their fucking instagram handle is like sn95 cobra man or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. um yeah it's an outfit you put on and 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 it, it says something about about you yeah. and i think that you do a great job as a photographer when you shoot other people's cars of capturing what those cars say about them. When you've shot my cars, I think you've created beautiful photographs, but I think the the photographs somehow represent me and my lifestyle as well with my Fox body and that sweatshirt with the interior and the beach. Like that's very me, like with the Lambo, like up on the the canyons in the er very early morning at sunrise. Like that's a thing I do. That was probably one of the last times the snake's ever been open. Yeah. They closed it like a week after that. Yeah. Yeah. How how crazy is that? Yeah. yeah. That's why I like having that picture. And the thing is like the road signs are all burnt and everything. I literally remember seeing uh, like a no parking sign. <laughs> and I just touched it and it fell over. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you should have kept it. That would have been a good memento. <laughs> you know what I honestly think they should do with the snake? Mm-hmm. I really believe this. Because I don't really miss it that much as a road. It's And there's a million other roads that are like the snake. Um, the scene up at the top when it got crazy, it was fun for a minute, I'll admit. But, but I don't really care about the road. I think they should make that a dedicated cycling road. Hmm. The, the tension between cars and cyclists in the canyons has always been high. Yeah. I've always tried to do my part to reduce it. Right. And whenever I see a cyclist in my videos, I make a point of give him room. It's just a fucking cy- you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I and you see people that are cunty cyclists and they ride in the middle and they don't let you buy. Yeah. And okay, those people are going to exist, but like we're in cars. Like we're we we're going to fuck somebody up in any interaction here. So yeah. let's be a little eh, you know. And so but I really think like Obviously, they don't want cars going up and down the snake. Fine. Maybe the snake isn't structurally, quote, sound enough for cars. Fine. But it's probably structurally sound enough for people and bicycles. Right. So, like, assuming it is, and if it's not, by all means, someone tell me if it's too fucking sketchy to do this. But, like, the cyclists wanted it anyway. Yeah. (laughs) If you're going to close it for cars, just let them have it and call it, you know, the blah, blah, blah bicycle hill climb trail. Well, it's been closed for so long. Um I think people people might be doing that anyway. Right. Do people miss it? Well, that's an interesting question. I think people have kind of 
found other things to do. Mm. Hey, you haven't come to Bill's on Sundays, have you? What's to that? the Malibu kitchen? No. Bro, so pretty much starting, I don't know, when was it, Zach? May, June? When did the Bills thing really get going? I think August, really. So COVID, every car show ended, right? Yeah. Nobody wanted to be the person who organized the car show, right? right? No one wants to organize a gathering (laughs) during fucking COVID, right? Yeah. So the parking lot at the Malibu Kitchen in in Malibu at at the Cross Creek Shopping Center, me, Spike... Uh, Zuckerman and some other like you know LA car personality type folks mm-hmm. started just hanging out there as we always had done, and I don't it's, we I'm not trying to take credit or anything, but oh, pretty quickly all the stores were fucking closed for yeah. months right in this whole yeah. parking lot. So pretty quickly people realized like we could just hang out here and all the stores are closed and nobody really gives a shit. So yeah. it 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 became like a thing, and because. There is no official organizer. There's like pretty much no one to blame. Like it's a public parking lot. People are patronizing the couple restaurants in there. And now that stores are reopening, they're starting to go back in stores as well. But like there's no organizer. So you can't like shut it down. It's it's just a a naturally occurring car show. Right. And so they attempted to shut it down in horrific failure multiple times, and they've now just given up. Huh. And so, so now it's a thing. So now it's a thing. And it gets a little hard to find parking after like 8.30 a.m., but if you get there like early, you can find it. And, and it's a pretty cool – you know, everyone's wearing masks. Every, you know, people are – People are doing the things right, but it's a real cool, eclectic yeah. assortment of cars, and and it's uh, it's been a good time. It's I been mean, fun. The thing is, like naturally, with cars, uh, if we you're gather. Not, if you're not at the SEMA show, you're not you know nut to butt, right? <laughs> when you when you're really packed into like the yeah. Tokyo Auto Salon or yeah. SEMA show or LA Auto Show, car shows are not the yeah, source of the, the of the problem. It's, uh, yeah, when you're outside. I mean, we've been shooting so many events. We've been shooting car shows. We've been shooting racing events. When you're outside, generally speaking, all you have to do is just keep your distance. You it's know? fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we have been doing our best. We've been. We've where been have that. you been? Uh, where have you been the last few months that surprised you? That you really were like, oh shit, this is going on here. What's this about? Is there any, um, anywhere really uh, new and interesting? We, I mean. <laughs> We've been so many places. It's one of those things where you think you try to think of what you've been shooting. You can't um, even remember. Yeah, I, you can't I, even I remember. believe me, I've fucking yeah. been there, bro. Yeah. I know. I, yeah, 2020, I honestly thought it was going to be one of those things where it's like, man, we didn't do anything this year, right? <laughs> but I look back at our catalog of photos that we've gotten and different shoots. Uh, what's happened is we're not doing the traditional shoots. Yeah, yeah. Like, Obviously, we're not shooting SEMA show, you know. That maybe takes that, maybe it's for the best. Yeah, so that takes what <laughs> ten days out of our like that. We get ten days back. Yeah, but with that, we're shooting something else. That's what I'm saying, you man. Know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You quit smoking cigarettes. Got to exactly. find something else to do with your hours. Yeah, and like for example, with Formula Drift, it um, they uh, they did double headers. And it's less events, so it's four instead of eight, right? Uh, and what that's actually done is that's given us a lot of time back um, to, to shoot other things. Uh, for example, like Travel this, days are annoying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have half as many of them now. It's exactly. fabulous. Exactly. Like, for example, with this Z shoot. Weren't I, there, wasn't it Dallas this week? Is that what it was Formula D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, Formula D, yeah, right? Yeah. Were you there? Yeah, I was How there. How was it? Yeah. Um, it, it was a little rough uh, because... Um, uh, the venue didn't really seem to want us there. Oh, well, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. But that's, <laughs> I feel like that's a conversation for another time. But, you know, the. Usually the point... they sort that out in the contracts <laughs> yeah, before, yeah. You, before you show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're here to do the gig. Right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the problem is uh, those guys worked so hard to scramble to basically save the season, you know, and. Unfortunately, there was some cuts, but the point is that it still happened yeah. and it was still awesome. And I, I, like, for example, the first event that we went to, the first Formula Drift event was in St. Louis. And I can't tell you how excited people were to see us and to see the cars and just get out of their house. Yeah. You know? Um, 
Okay. Uh, what one uh, event that I j- just popped up on my head? That's um, or one thing I had a chance to do um, was we actually had a chance to shut down Pike's Peak this year. Yeah, with like I actually had the mountain to myself to do. I did a shoot with my friends at Triple Zero Magazine. Oh yeah, great! And we legitimately rented the mountain on what would have been race day or Hilarious. race week. Yeah. To do what, the 935s or something? Yeah, so we shot a 935 and also um, a GT2 RS Club Sport. So not that. Um, if you just scroll. Was it the, was it Zwartz? Um, no, it wasn't Zwartz. It was another one. But How many you, 935s fucking ran at Pikes Peak? Uh, so there were just three? one. But just but one. Two, but just two, one. Two guys ran uh, GT2 CSs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Club Sports, yeah. So if you go down just a little bit, uh, just a couple, like a it was like a month before. I have yet uh, to go to Pikes Peak in person, Larry. When I oh do, when yeah, I do, to, I'm going to go to with go you. Together. No, when I do, I'm yeah. going with you. Yeah. When I so, do, right I'm, there, right I'm there. gonna, I'm gonna get yeah. a 500 mil fucking lens, and we're gonna, we're gonna go. We're gonna freeze our asses off. It's gonna be great. So, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. But I mean, just being able to shoot above the tree line, yeah. is, is something else. Like. We're above where trees can grow. Yeah. You know? um, so And in my background, my I, I shot my senior thesis in desert landscapes. Like, I'm, it's not far off. Yeah. Like, we're, we're in the same ballpark here. So to be able to get this photo, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Mm-hmm. Mountain is shut down. Blind for, corner. For this shoot. And uh, I've always wanted to do this. You know, it's such a beautiful place. And during sunrise, nonetheless, you know? Yeah. Um, so they gave us the mountain for three hours, and I literally wow. took every single minute of that. And I documented it, and I cannot wait to share this whole story with uh, everybody once the magazine comes out. It's a beautiful shot that we're looking yeah. at right now. Is that up? Yeah. Ultimately, though, let me ask you this. Yeah. And i am be honest. Yeah. Ultimately, like, yes, obviously... An amazing dream, yes. Because you've been to Pikes Peak a zillion times yeah. to close it and do a sh- uh, to get a shot like this. Yeah, for myself. And I know, and I yeah. know how hard that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you actually did it, were you like, actually, it wasn't that hard to shut down Pikes Peak? And now you're thinking I about mean, all kinds of things you could do by shutting down Pikes Peak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is. Potentially, you. The thing is, you could never steal this shoot. You know, you can't sneak up there before the sun rises. You know, the the mountain opens at a time, and it's like nine thirty or whatever ten. Um, they let tourists up. Uh, oh, you can't. No, no, you can't. There's a no. gate. To steal this. There's a gate. I forgot about gate. that. Yeah. I remember the tire temperature gate, right? Yeah. Or the brake temperature that's, or the tire that's temperature. That's one of the Both. gates. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You I forgot even... about that. You literally cannot no, get up there at sunrise. No. Yeah. Oh, that's a game changer. It's a state exactly. Park. That's a game changer. Yeah. Now I really get it. I don't think I got it before. Now I get it. Yeah. It's not yeah. just a normal road. Yeah. No. Now we're on, now we're on Scotto level shutdowns. Be- believe, I got it. Yeah, believe yeah, yeah. me. Uh, you know me. If there's a road. You know, and I could shoot there any time of day. I will steal that road and yeah. I will shoot on that road. Yeah, you know, because it's a public road and we're just driving that damn road. Yeah. Um, but this. No, is I get not, it now because yeah. you have to actually get them to open it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, even Porsche uh, posted a couple photos from this shoot. So if you. Uh, Click on Triple Zero Magazine if you click on their profile. I hope they give you some really nice breathing room and some really nice fucking DPI printing in this magazine (laughs) to make it worthwhile, bro. I'll show you. Uh, Like that shot right there. Do you get to verify how many DPI your ultimate (laughs) printout (laughs) is? Like, listen, I'll do this shoot for you, but not if it's less than 600 DPI. (laughs) That's beautiful. um, Really nice. Close that. I think there's another. That's Go fabulous. Down. Sorry, audio folks. Nah, You're no fucked worries. on this one. We're talking yeah, about photography. Sorry. But you knew what you're getting into. Or maybe- uh, You listen to a podcast with a photographer. What can you do, folks, the, but look at the pictures? Maybe check out Porsche's Instagram. <coughs> uh, they they uh, sick. posted this one that I'm super proud of because we actually had a chance to park it you know, in a blind corner or Evo corner even, uh, where I've always dreamed of shooting like a full-on shoot. Um, yeah, That's geez, fuck. Closing Pikes yeah. Peak. Yeah. Did Keep they, going. in order to close, so like, in order, would, were they let, did, did you get to like mob a little bit? Was it one yeah, of those? Yeah, the guys like, were going fast. <laughs> yeah. They were going fast. They were not going slow. Like, well, they were like, oh, this is free testing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of the thing is some of the shots, 
it honestly looked like it was uh, uh, during race week. But a lot of these shots that I did, I just try to make it like a thing where it's basically impossible to, to well, do. Well, that's the idea, week. right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the if you can, because you, you can shoot. The, it's not like you're going to miss the car going by during race week, right? You can get those shots. Yeah, yeah. you've gotten those shots. The point is, you got to demonstrate a shot that wouldn't be possible during race week. Exactly. That's the key. Just parked backwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it was before. <laughs> like just, mall. just uh, keep going. Park Sorry. somewhere you couldn't possibly park a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes so much sense. Sorry, I just want to show. you you this one don't get I'm lost so in the of. fucking instagram yeah. rabbit hole let him find it he'll find it right. don't don't okay. watch he'll find right. it Zach yeah. is an expert he will find it um it's, it's just to be able to do that and that would have not have been possible because the race itself actually got moved um because you know everything and that it opened up that weekend and no one else wants to do anything oh uh before that, three Sorry. wide parked in the, yeah. in the on Pike's Peak is pretty cool. Before what that. about have you ever <clears throat> have you gotten into right there? Uh, any, yeah, right there. To have the you left. gotten yeah. into any aerial Down. photography yet? I mean, I know the gear is not quite there unless you're fucking flying a DSLR on one of those bu giant drones. But like, is that a thing you're interested in, or is that um, not your thing so much? I I actually got into drones pretty early on, um, but uh, I just. I mean, I guess I never really. I I, I like using them, mm. but it's not really a part of my workflow, um, because a lot of times there's just so many technical aspects uh, of it. Like when there's a race happening, you can't just let me set my <laughs> drone up and just fly into this guy, yeah. you know, as he's coming around this corner. Um, it just doesn't really work for what I'm doing. Um, with that said, I love uh, shooting from the air. I love it so much. I love shooting from helicopters. Oh, hanging out of helos. That's helicopters. And actually, recently, I had a chance to shoot um, a plane to plane shoot with Tanner Faust. <laughs> just, Tanner wants yeah. any fucking excuse to fly his exactly. fucking plane. He hits me exactly. up. Goes, Bro, let's go to lunch at Catalina. Yeah, I'll yeah, come yeah, get yeah, you. I'm yeah. like, where are you? I don't even know. So, <laughs> so, Tanner, so the story is, um, and if you check up, uh, check my Instagram, it's uh, one of the recent photos that I posted. Um, or, or if you check Tanner's Instagram, he's been posting from it. But he has me do this shot. You know, I, I've been shooting Tanner since 2004, okay? I've been following his work or, and his racing. You know, he's always paying the bills. He's always, you know, drinking from his yes, drink. Right is. there, right there. Oh, yeah. But he's That's drinking tight. His That's monster. close. He's, he's drinking got his energy his, rock star. Or his rock star yeah, energy yeah. drink yeah. in the air. And I have a video version of this, too. That's good. We are. He like, can probably milk that for like a month. Look at that. You we just are, paid his bills. That's straight up you paid his bills. I could have thrown this water bottle at him. That's how close <laughs> I was. You in another have. plane. Whose plane were you in? Um. So that's the crazy thing. Planes are a different world, right? They had a plane meet. But a plane Get meet. The fuck you know, I'm not kidding. Here. I'm not kidding. They had a plane Cars meet. Cars and coffee, in but the, for planes? In the sky? Yes. They just but, meet well, in the sky. That, yes, that. And the crazy thing is. Bro, they run for slips. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'll pull you from 120K. <laughs> the, the thing is, they are from all over. No shit. That's you the know, thing that's with planes. You know, that's the thing about planes. Like, <laughs> when, when we have a car meet. That's the thing about planes, Larry. Uh, They're yeah. from everywhere. <laughs> The, Whenever the, you reverse, yeah, things but the, come from behind. The car meet is like, oh my god, these guys drove from yes. whatever, like San Diego, or you know, they woke up at however many, <laughs> whatever, three a.m. to make this meet. But these fucking guys are coming from it's other like states, Minnesota, yeah. for for <laughs> this meet That's for crazy. the day. Where was the plane meet? Uh, it was at uh, John Wayne. Oh, did, did Tanner host it? It, him and his friends. That's hilarious. Yeah. And people just showed up because that's yeah. like Tanner's airport. He didn't have to fly nowhere. Exactly. So they showed up <laughs> and then they did a formation flying thing. And How many was, people showed up? How many planes showed up? So this time it was three planes. Okay. And Or I think it was more, but um, they didn't join us on the actual flight part of it. That's so kind of awesome. was, what happens when tra strangers try to formation fly together? Is uh, that you can't. Sketchy? It's, it's so much concentration. For these guys, because they are like wingtip to wingtip, yeah. you know. Um, 
And like, this is not even with a crazy lens. This is with a 7200. I believe and I'm you were very close. close. <laughs> I believe I'm this you were close, very close with a 200 millimeter. Dude, you know, I'm doing a show with Tanner right now called Sorted. Oh, oh it's that's a tuner right. That's car right. Show. I saw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really yeah. fucking fun. Yeah. And we did our West Coast thing at Chuck Walla. Right. Well, he, f- he flew there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when he dipped out at the end of day two, this motherfucker straight buzzed the tower. <laughs> Like a G, he fucking took off, looped it around, and buzzed the tower at Chuck Wall. It was so, very good. So the thing is, um, with, with this, like if, if you go to uh, my Instagram, <laughs> I posted some things um, from it recently also. But that's it, on him, though, straight up. That's how much of a pro he is to know that you were shooting and grab his rock well, star can and do that. He could see me. Do hand signals. Oh, did That's you tell him to do it? To do yeah. the rock star cam? Well, I, I could tell him, like, go up a little bit or go closer yeah, or go down pro. or it's 3D. It's a pro. You know, when, when we do car to car, if you just throw oh, that, that's a little bit. Oh, shit, it's 3D. Yeah. Go up and go down also. Oh, exactly. that must be crazy. That's got to be so, so fun. It's just so insane. We were doing, oh, right when there, we right were there, shooting right the tuner car show, yeah. um, you know, he was, when he was doing his stunt driving portion Check of this that. Out, look. Oh, that's fucking cool, man. Wow. You pull that up, Zach. I have yeah. all my I have all my cameras with me. That's Tanner, and I'm just like this is pretty cool. Th- th- the guy in the back, there. the guy in the back of the plane is mind blown. Oh, the doors yeah, the open. Door open. Yeah, 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 doors open. Yeah, yeah. You're, this go, guy in the back. Ahead, who's just... the guy in the back who's losing his mind? <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, but I like him. He's, <laughs> he's fucking, also a pilot. He's losing his so mind. So he's one of the guys that showed up for the meet. <laughs> So. <laughs> He's also a pilot, and yeah. his face says that this is sketchy as hell. This, these are all with my cell phone. Like, if we you gotta think, send you up with the warplanes with those guys who fly the yes, World War II joints. That would be so cool. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if you've seen that viral video of some guy directing, like, you know, whatever F F sixteens or something. No, that's awesome. From the from the back of a uh, like a refueling uh-huh. or cargo whatever C C seven doing like yeah, cargo yeah. to yeah, fighter yeah. jet, cargo to fighter jet. I, I want to say I felt like that, but with just like pedestrian passenger planes, you know, no, like it's still a great shot. These are with my cell phone and look how close I am. That's an amazing I shot. I can't even get <laughs> far back enough. We can't see the get, whole plane. Yeah, we can't see you the can't whole plane. You can't zoom out on a wide ass angle exactly. fucking phone. <laughs> it's with this phone right here. So these wow. are all with my Those cell phone. Those are great phones. shots, dude. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, because, uh, you know, me, I, I like to shoot with my cell phone as well as yeah. my DSLR or my mirrorless, whatever. You know, I, I, I try to get as much as I can this because. A fabulous shot. This yeah, is you just did really nice. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> These are just with my cell phone. You know, the point is that I just want to tell people <laughs> what I'm doing. Tanner's got a great paint job on his plane. It looks really nice. Look at him. It makes it look like a much more premium aircraft. <laughs> Dude, uh, when he was doing, so when we were shooting the tuner car show, yeah. both in the East and West Coast regionals, yeah. because I've done it a million times, when Tanner was doing his stunt driving yeah. car to car on track, I drove the van because okay. like, I just like knew how to do it. Mm-hmm. And I was driving, you know, the Grand Caravan, you know, sport, whatever, yeah. as fast as a fucking thing would go. <laughs> Left foot braking, you know what I mean? Like all, right. all the whole deal. And he was a robot. Oh. I mean, it was, we would do, we went on the first lap and he'd go, okay, I'm going to do a pass on the right and then a pass on the left. And then we're going to break here. I'm going to, you're, you're going to get a lead and then I'm going to drift this corner entry. And then you accelerate here and then I'm going to drift this corner entry. And then I'm going to move from the right to the left. And we went over it once and then he did it a hundred times exactly the same. I mean, it that's... was crazy. Look what he's built just from his driving skill. I know it's ridiculous. You know, I take pictures, um, he he drives. He was a he's a robot, and he's his on camera is very funny because yeah. he you know because he's always sponsored, doesn't curse. We have <laughs> we have him on camera like driving some shady shit. <laughs> he was driving. He was on a road course in a Supra uh-huh. ninety three Supra uh-huh. with thirteen hundred wheel horsepower. He told me about it. Slick it's and a drag skinny. car. <laughs> drag he told me about it. Yeah. yeah, he said he wants to start a new motorsport in which it's the inverse of Formula Drift. It's where you do burnouts down every straightaway through four gears. And then just try and keep control through the corners. I love that. Yeah, that seems yeah. like something Australia or New was, Zealand would be on board with. <laughs> he was telling me about that. But um, so after this shoot, the next morning he had to fly to Willow Springs uh-huh. for a shoot for a couple hours, then fly to Reno for like an afternoon thing. 
something and then fly back. You still have to commute. You just go like way further. That's but you can do two jobs in a day. That's a completely yeah. different world that yeah. I just don't even You ever see the understand. documentary uh, with Steve Aoki called I'll Sleep When I'm yes, Dead? Yes, yes, I watched that. Yeah. You want to talk about someone yeah. whose work ethic I am not jealous of. That motherfucker is go- like he circumnavigates the globe every three days. Like it's crazy. I don't know. Maybe that's not fun anymore at that I, point. It you know, can't where, be. Where, There's no way. Where it's do you fun. go after that? I don't know. Oh. You oh, die of a drug overdose, probably. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I, I hate to be grim, right. but Jesus fucking Christ, someone who does that. Well, Avicii, continuously like, with all yeah, you know, Avicii, that's Avicii. Like he got real sick and then he killed himself. Yeah, basically, Ooh. Avicii. Uh, another Nerd. DJ who basically had the oh, same okay. uh, lifestyle that Steve Aoki had, just that crazy, crazy yeah. hustle. But I think he had some stomach issues, which yeah. led to painkillers and then booze, and it was just yeah. like bad news, bad news. It's just, you, it could go south so fast, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, that, that type of lifestyle is crazy. And yeah. I tried to do it for a couple of years, not on that level, but like everything I could go to, no matter where it was. It's yeah. horrible for your health. No, it's I've horrible. been in LA for eight months. I've never been healthier. Yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. I've literally Being never able been to sleep. In my life. I can't tell you. Just recently, I knew it was ever eventually going to happen, but just recently, I was in a hotel. I got up and I walked into a wall, <laughs> hard, <laughs> like really hard. You were so Be- familiar with your yes. room. Well, no, because I was thinking it was another hotel. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> oh, it sucks. <laughs> we, we, you know, we saw you at the Pikes Peak every morning. It was like three forty-five. Oh, yeah, it's like Larry, Zach, like how are you doing? That's right. That was know? the last time I saw you, and yeah. um, I'm super excited for all of that stuff. Yeah. Which, by it's, the way, I don't know if we're really allowed cool. to talk about that, but anyways. Um, oh, about that? I don't think so. Yeah. Whatever you shot at uh, Pikes Peak, we we shot. We're starting to promote a little bit, but we shot a, a documentary that's like ninety minutes long. It's gonna be on Discovery. Yeah. And Larry was no. a part of it, and we covered a lot of different races <sighs> and stories. I'm so and, excited to be yeah. a part of that, and you. You know, the, I keep bringing that that race up, and you, you know, you you say you want to check it out. It it would be awesome. It would be an honor to to kind of show you around. I know it would be yeah. amazing. I'd have I I would want to go only if I had like no obligations at all. Right. Just right. chill. Maybe bring a little barbecue. You know, and serve people meat. Maybe <laughs> just that's it, and just hang out and watch cars go by. Get the pretty shots with you because you know the light, the corners, you know where to stand. And I would just cook food, and that's all I would want to do. Yeah. Cook food on the side of the mountain for like hours. I mean, because you've shot rally like WRC stuff, yes. and you've shot Pikes Peak. Yes. How do the two compare, and how are they different for you? Um, I think the, the thing is, um, with Pikes Peak, it's it's just the mountain itself. You know that there's a certain amount of corners, right? There's a finite amount of corners. There's, you you would think that you could get everything from it just after a couple of years. But after following this race since the last year of the dirt, it's every year there's something new for me to discover. I don't know what it is. I mean, it physically does change, Yeah. but it could be the light, it could be the fog, it could be, one day we're shooting completely above the clouds, like you're looking below the. Cl- you're you're looking um, down at yeah them. yeah down yeah. at the clouds, and it's <clears throat> it's not it's so defined. You know, it's like a different world versus uh, WRC. I feel like it's a little more fast pace, hmm. and it's not so much about the beautiful overall image. It's more focused on the car itself. Yeah, there is right? like a stillness to Pikes Peak, and almost like. You can focus on it. You know, it, it's a, it's a, even though it, like you said, it's 136 corners or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it, there's a singular focus yeah. because it's like this is the mountain. This is the thing that they are trying to go up, and yeah. it's just this. And then like rally is like, well, this is stage one of seven yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, and it crosses, yeah. and the car goes into the distance. You can't see it anymore because it goes through a forest or whatever. But this like. Even well, it's the same reason the you big it. big landscapes are more interesting photographs than. Yeah forest you know deep forest details it is you know what i mean such it's so hard in every aspect on the photography side on the racing side even the spectators you know mm-hmm. it's just it's hard physically on your body not to say yeah. wrc is easy either right wrc is probably one of the hardest motorsports i mean i haven't shot dakar yet 
I'm guessing that's probably, that's probably one hard. of the hardest. Baja, yeah. Dakar, Baja, yeah. I've shot Baja um, most of the time from a helicopter, so I don't know if that that's counts. G. Yeah. But um, with, with with Pikes Peak, it's so physically demanding. You know, there was one year, uh, last year actually, I went up to the top and then I was at I was at the finish line and then they measured my oxygen level and they're like, you should be chilling. I'm like, nope. Like, no, nope. I'm just pushing hard. I'm going to push as hard as I can until the race is over, you know? Um, and and it's, it's, it's something to conquer. It's something else. Like, unfortunately, this year we actually – we were at the top um, before race day, and we spread Carlin Dunn's ashes. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's at heavy. the finish line. Yeah, yeah, that's heavy. Because the year before, unfortunately, mm-hmm. he passed away, and that's why we don't have motorcycles now. And hopefully, um, because of uh, his uh, mom and dad, hopefully, motorcycles will come back sometime soon. Oh, are they trying to yeah, get it trying. to come back? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to project my own death at Pikes Peak, but I feel like if I died doing a motorsport, I wouldn't want to be the the thing that canceled the motorsport. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. I mean, he he was such a good person, and um, we were actually working for Ducati that <clears throat> year. And the reason why was because of him. You know, we we've been so lucky to be able to follow him and shoot him over the years. Um, even he did some. St- I think he did some stuff with Hoonigan. We we did some stuff in Mexico together, um, and he's a great uh, off road racer too. For for him to. to like you said, the the whole thing about uh, him unfortunately causing the cancellation of motorcycles. Yeah, I don't. I think mean, I like understand. That. You know, you go back to like Le Mans fifty five, yeah. right, where a car right. sails into the crowd. There's massive spectator yeah. fatalities. That's you know, is there a lesson to be learned here? Yeah. Like I like obviously, it's terrible that that you know, someone died racing, but is there a lesson there or, you know, is it just a very dangerous thing that that people are doing? Yeah, it's too easy to forget how dangerous motorsports is. Um, This this race- Seems like the Isle of Man TT reminds everybody every year how dangerous (laughs) motorsports is. Yeah, I feel like everyone just like turns a blind eye to that. If they haven't canceled the Isle of Man yet and it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's tragedy every year. It's crazy. I mean, um, but with this race, we should close down the questions. By the way, for the live audience, I, to, oh. I told them half an hour ago. To oh, stop really? Oh, we have yeah. way too oh, many. Should we, should we go some. on questions now? Yeah, Sorry. we can get to some. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to cut off what you're what you're saying. But, um, just... but just last point. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm such an advocate for this race, and for me to be the official photographer, uh, it's such an honor. You know, this year was the 98th running. Next year is going to be 99th. And we're already signed up for the hundredth running. Well, so what you need is the Larry Chen Pikes Peak Special Edition camera. <laughs> what would be awesome about a Pikes Peak camera is if it had that second battery at the bottom. Yeah. But it actually made, was a grip warmer. Right. If it actually right. had a grip warming and lens warming device, so your hands would be good at three forty five in the third morning. Third battery that has you, oxygen in it. <laughs> I like that. Allegedly. So you put it up to your face, and, it, and then there's a tube that comes yeah. out of it. It goes into your mouth, and yeah. you can breathe while you're shooting. It's a respirator, yeah. uh, heater, and camera all in one. Yeah. Full, full pike speak unit. Yeah, and and you know what it's like to be up there. 40% less oxygen Yeah, up top. Yeah, it's a which lot. I just can't believe. And you drive up there, so like, you know, you drive up, well, you know, we drove up to like Devil's Playground, and we parked. Yeah. And it it sneaks up on you how little oxygen there is because you drive up and you're in your van and you're like, all right, we're up here, we're doing our thing. You kind of forget, like you yeah. didn't hike up to it. You know, yeah. you didn't really yeah. notice the gradual exactly. decline yeah. of decrease yeah. of oxygen. Yeah. Then you walk up your first very slight hill, like the driveway from the parking lot just to the road, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is 15 feet of elevation, yeah. and now you're tired. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I, I think I looked it up, uh, Everest Base Camp, 50% less oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which Hannah and I on our you know? trip yeah. recently did a hike that be started at 9,500 feet, which oh. is nowhere near Pikes Peak, but it was 9,500 to 117 was mm-hmm. the hike. Like three quarters of the way through it, like we were gonna die. Like <laughs> we couldn't fucking breathe. It was like, it was like six steps, catch your breath. Six, and it was like, and this is what thirteen thousand is where you guys are at. Fourteen thousand. Fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. At the yeah. Top, yeah. 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 I think that's why You're all t- the drivers have to wear oxygen. Yeah. Like it's required. They don't well, care. Well, it's probably you know. good. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get to some. Uh, <sighs> let's see what the people have to say. Yeah. I bet they yeah. have a fucking lot. 
Um, oh, good. Zach is filtered. Thank you, Zach. Kyle B. says, I have a, a 2014 Mercedes E63 S, and I might get the new BMW M5. I wouldn't. It's boring. Uh, is there anything else in the 80 to 90K range? Well, first off, oh, a 2019 M5. I would look at. I would get the Mercedes for that money. Fast Mercedes sedans. C- uh, the, oh, yeah. I would go with the E sixty three. Okay, yeah. Fast sedans in in at the eighty ninety k range. The Mercedes is going to be your gold standard right now. Hmm. I would say. Yeah, I like the interior on the Mercedes better as well. Yeah, BMW is not not really doing it right now. Sorry to say. Thanks, Kyle. Sean Finney says a while ago I mentioned a cat book I liked about oh cat psychology. Uh, the name of the book, the cat book. Um, Jackson Galaxy is the author. He looks like his name sounds like he looks, and the book is called Catification. I think actually, <laughs> Jackson. yeah, Galaxy. Catification, <laughs> and is 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 uh, it, he has two books. There's two books, and and one of them was Catification, and then there was the other one that's called Total Cat Mojo. That I think is what it's called. They're really good. They sound corny as fuck, but yes, they are good. <laughs> Dusty, how many Sub- rings does Jackson Galaxy wear? A lot of rings, scarves, right. yeah. vests. Uh, there's a handlebar mustache involved. It's kind of like an tiger prince. Well, <laughs> it's like a more fashionable pirate. Okay, uh, who really just likes cats. <laughs> <laughs> he has a fucking enormous Instagram. Jackson Galaxy's Instagram is like five million. Yar, it's two litter boxes. <laughs> Trust me. We, we shouldn't make fun of him. He books out at a rate that's like five or six times what I book at. Dusty says, I'm new to the off-road industry as a professional photographer and writer. What are some of the challenges you face starting out as an automotive cre- Oh, geez, this is like an interview question. Oh, yeah, wow. What's the, cha- what's the biggest challenge to shooting off-road motorsports? Let's just boil um, that down to something palatable. Yeah, off, off-road is, is so much uh, about doing your homework. You know, pre-running... Uh, learning where you can and can't shoot, where potentially the cars will get uh, roosted out or, or dusty or just like, it's so much just about, forget about the car, just focus on the background. Mm. You know, focus on what the car potentially could be doing. Focus on, hey, here's a jump here. You know, that's how you get better off-road f- photos. If you just zoom in on the car and it's ripping through the desert, and you just showed the car, it could be in any desert in the world, Yeah, you know? Just step back a little bit and then really tell the story of that. And that's such a steep learning curve. Learning off-road photography, you essentially have to run that same race uh-huh. with your own off-road vehicle to even get to that location, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. honestly, that's the biggest challenge for me personally. You're shooting landscape photography, but with a motorsport shutter speed is exactly. what you're doing. Exactly. And so you need to be in a landscape mindset. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that, you have to follow the race. Yeah. Let's say the car passes you and you want to get it again. What do you have to do? <laughs> How many miles of road do you have to cut? To, to get to, that. Yeah. yeah. To, to What if you're... What if you're not fast enough and then he already passed you? Yeah. And you're waiting for them. And they're and gone. They're already gone. Yeah. yeah. I did that. I shot the Vegas Serino thing. Yeah, and exactly. I thought I had this perfect like exactly. shot into the sunset thing. Yeah. And I was three minutes too slow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, where is it? I've been here 20 minutes. Like I, it's gone. Yeah. It's happened yeah. so many times where I just pull up to the spot that I think I've got there fast enough. I open my bag and then I see him oh, drive by. Sucks. Yeah. Uh, what was your first press car and the first piece of content you built around it? Do you get press cars ever? Yeah. Um, you do? My most recent one was a uh, uh, Porsche, uh, the, the the Carrera 4S. Oh, the new one. Not so yeah. bad, is it? Yeah, it's not a nice so car. Bad. First press car. Um, I think honestly it was the uh, GT86. Oh, the that's FRS. all right. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first press car. They gave it to me for ten days. I put. 2,000 miles on that thing. I was like, hell yeah, free car. <laughs> you know? yeah. It was so cool. Yeah. 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 My first press car was an FJ Cruiser. And what? I did not review it kindly. Oh. I, gave a, I gave a bad review to my first ever press car. You know I have an FJ. In hindsight, <laughs> the things that I wanted out of it are not what people like. You know, no. the resale value of those is really the drive is the yes. indicator of whether or not it's a good car, not whether or not I like them. Well, I I just put a supercharger <clears throat> mine in. And oh, it's interesting. So much fun to drive. Oh, that's kind of cool. Thing. All yeah. right, neat. I'm not an FJ Cruiser man myself, but I get why people like them. Uh, Charles, thank you for donation. Dante Zero says, Larry, I've been trying to up my 
photo game. I know the rule of thirds. I'm starting to understand how focal lengths change things. What's the next thing I should work on? Hmm. I think um, the next thing that you can really focus on is uh, shutter speeds and kind of how it affects the photos you're shooting. Because once you get uh, uh, introduced like that motion aspect of photography, there's so many different ways to tell the story. Yeah, of, freeze it, yeah, blur it, exactly. Freeze it with a blurred background. Exactly. All so kinds like of when we did your shoot with your Safari 911. Some of my favorite photos weren't pan shots. Some of my favorite photos were the fact that you were spinning up so much dirt and three wheeling, and I just uh, essentially conveyed the sh the speed by freezing the action. Yeah, you know, because there's no way in hell that car could just be sitting there with one wheel up, you know, by itself uh, with a huge trail of dust behind it. If you freeze it, it kind of shows the action. Yeah, so you got to think about do you want to show a freeze or a blur or a combination of the two in order to tell the story about that car? Yeah. And that's the beauty of still photography versus video. You know, nothing mm -hmm. against video, um, but you're locked into certain shutter speeds slash shutter angles when you're shooting video, right? right. Uh, with still photography, you can go, you know, eight thousandth of a second. Uh, even higher potentially all the way to 30th of a second if you're doing like long light trails or whatever night photography you can't do that with video right you know yeah. it's almost something that that slow motion especially with like 180 frames per second or higher like mm -hmm. really was a gift to video it, it almost gave them a piece of what photography has especially like take uh Baja 1000 yeah, yes. these trucks go through and you've got four wheels with two feet of articulation yes. and it's really incredible but in video you're just seeing this thing going <laughs> and that's really cool and you're right. looking at it like wow look at the speed it's carrying but yeah. with, with the photo you can go oh my god that wheel's two feet higher than this wheel yeah, but the truck yeah. body is mostly flat and with slow motion you're able to see like here's how this is actually working exactly. instead of just you know, it's like uh, seeing it in fast motion is like the icing on the cake and now yeah. with slow motion or photo you actually get to taste the cake yeah yeah for sure um, Eric was just texting me. Cameron Weiss's Beetle is here. Oh. It's in transit. Uh, Caleb says, any comments on SSC faking their top speed run? Caleb, uh, we don't believe they faked it. We believe they bungled it, mm -hmm. which I think is a difference of intent. Uh, we did about we, 20 minutes on this. Yes, on, on, a, on a previous show. show. So uh, the show where Zach and I, that we recorded a podcast, uh, it might even be the one that airs right before this one. Correct. Uh, we recorded it while off-roading the G-Wagon. Uh, we talked about it extensively in that show, so have a listen there. Jason says, I just started getting paid for my writing and photography after going full-time freelance. What's the best way to keep pitching stories to editors? Do you pitch, Larry? Yeah, I mean, when, when I see a good story, uh, I feel like I just... It has to fit the magazine or the outlet or the YouTube channel or whatever, you know? Um, I, th I think this is one of those things where you just gotta focus on what you know and what you love. You know, the the things that I love, you know what I love. You know, so much racing, um, you know, Pikes Peak, off-road, uh, whatever, slow and low, fast and loud, all of that. Uh, you know, if, if I know about it, I wanna show the world this thing, you know, like with, with uh, these events and with the cars that I'm able to feature when I go to grid life, whatever. Uh, I just do my best to kind of promote that all across all, across all my channels, self-publish or or pitch to to these outlets. Um, if it's something I don't know too much about, you know, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's good. That's a good tip. Yeah. Jack Martin Photography says, uh, Larry, I love your work. Big inspiration. Oh, R five. He's been yeah. talking about the R. All right, Jack, we covered you already. Yeah. Uh, Sasha. Oh, wait, sorry. Jason Carey, Larry, what's the best way to get hired to shoot motorsports? I've been shooting stills and video professionally, but I can't seem to get over the threshold. I think um, the easy way to get in really is to use your uh, where you're located to your advantage and just start shooting amateur racing. It could be anything. It could be lawnmower racing. Could be circle track mm -hmm. racing, could be tractor racing, yeah, boat racing, whatever. You know, any kind of racing, if they're 
if they're local to you, maybe check them out. Yeah. You know, and chances are there's not that many photographers that really focus on this thing. And uh, what I focus on just happened to be drifting that was local to me. Yeah. And now all these years later, I'm still shooting drifting. Yeah. You know, I love it. But now, of course, lucky for me, it's, you know, now on the world stage. That is lucky for you. I didn't want you to credit your, I thought you were about to credit your own success to luck, and that's not true. That's pure hustle and skill, I uh, not it. luck. Uh, it is lucky that drifting went the way that it did, but mm -hmm. I feel like if it didn't, you would have found something else. Yeah, and, um, and yeah, just local, whatever. That's a good it advice, could, could though. Anything, Find yeah. anything local, yeah. anything, yeah. yeah. And also, like, maybe getting yourself hitched if you want to shoot a bigger motorsport, mm -hmm. find a smaller team that's local to you yeah. and try to shoot for that team and not for the organization exactly. you know, and, itself. And that, it just happens naturally, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's say you've ilf infiltrated your local circle track, right? One of those guys will take notice if you're if you put in the work if you yeah. put in the time and your photos are actually usable and good they'll they'll go up in the ranks too yeah you yeah. know as as will you you know yeah. and physically and being there though you got to be there exactly you gotta exactly be there. and that's why something local to you makes sense because mm -hmm. with someone like me uh you know i'm traveling all over because guess what racing and car culture happens all over but I'm lucky in that I can figure out a way to afford that. Yeah. But just going from one state to one state or one country to the, another country, that's the main expense for a lot of people. You yeah. Know? And I, I know a, a very good friend of mine works in motorsport, mm -hmm. and they she works with a very large, very well funded ener energy drink mm -hmm. uh, racing team, and she says that the cost of transportation outweighs the cost of building, prepping, and racing yeah. the car by a lot. Yeah, Getting to the races is more expensive than racing the races. Yeah, physically yeah. being there. I mean, to the point where, um, I think I probably said this on your podcast before, I would help trailer the race cars to the racetrack, you know, across state lines yeah. because that's the way I could save on my plane ticket. Make yourself you useful. Know? Yeah, at the time, I couldn't afford the $500, whatever it was, to fly across country you know yeah, yeah. Um, instead uh, the drivers or the teams are like hey we need help people um, to help us drive across country like uh, I'm like well it'll take three days <laughs> but guess what but I saved five hundred dollars yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and at the time that's a shitty that was gig a, yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I wanted to shoot racing yeah, you yeah, know yeah. and that's what it took well that's why the successful people are that you know the successful people it's not you got to have talent. You got to be a little. You got to be a little lucky. A little right place, right time. But you also have to fucking do the shitty thing to get there. Yeah, you know, you no. got. You can't wait for it to come to you. You know, you got to go get it for sure. Yeah. Um, Sasha says, "What's a good entry level vintage instant film camera like a Polaroid with a good mechanical feel?" Mm. Um, Any recommendations? So, uh, I've been shooting a lot with a Mint instant cameras. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the one that I have is the RF seventy, which is that's a little higher end. Mint you know, RF seventy, so, yeah, that's, you that's like eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh, but that's it's the fully flip manual. Out. Yeah, it's fully manual, and it's so awesome to be able to use modern uh, media, modern film, which is the Fuji Instax wide film, and it's like fifty cents per shot. That's great, and it's so great. So they make you know lower end ones potentially that are more affordable. But these are the only ones that are fully manual that allow you to, you know, change the the how much light's coming in, shutter speed, all of that. Yeah. Um, other than that, I would suggest probably just getting any of the Instax Fuji ones. Uh, the reason why is because the film is the cheapest and it's reliable every single time. It's 800 ISO. It's so reliable, and it lasts over 40 years yeah. probably. Yeah. It would be cool if you could somehow get like your almost like business card info printed on that extra space around yeah. the border on the back. If you could get Fuji to somehow make you like kachak here's a, and here it's got your contact info or something on the back of it. Cool. That would be amazing. Yeah. Would you rather have your own camera or your own film? I think on camera. Camera would be cool. probably yeah, would be that's cool. The one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, Larry, Freak Geek says, uh, what, cam- what f- Canon film camera should I purchase to use with my EF lens kit, or would you suggest a film camera with a different lens mount? Um, if you have EF lenses already, I would say to get uh, the EOS 1V, which is the last film camera, professional film camera that they made and sold. Um, you know, people used it for sports, people used it for Olympics, whatever. And that's, mm. I mean, motorsports, you know, that's, it looks like a regular, normal, what what they make now, 1D. Just with film. With, with film. Yeah. yeah. And I have one and I love it and I can use all of my fancy EF lenses. Um, it's a little on the slow side compared to, you know, what's out there in the modern camera world, I guess. But um, for the price, oh my God, you can't beat it. It is a chunk of metal though. It's so <laughs> heavy. It is solid. Nice. Um, and you can get them on eBay for pretty cheap. I think I bought mine for like $500. Oh yeah, yeah. that's probably a good deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's excellent. Yeah. Uh, and Nick just says, thank you, uh, Larry, you're a legend. Uh, I I use your photos as motivation to work on my JDM restoration. We appreciate that, sir. Yeah. Thanks honestly, for coming in, dude. Yeah, um, to to add to that comment, I honestly have the easy part of it. Like that, those guys are actually building the thing, and I come in <laughs> within three hours. I'm done with my thing. You know, yeah. like I I just I. But I hope I do justice to every car. That well, I making shoot. it look yeah. good is important because you can yeah. make it look bad too. I mean, it is yeah. possible to have a great car. That just just not look good, yeah, and you know, and you sure. take the wrong, you, taking the wrong picture can can kill a moment, just like taking the right picture can make the moment. You yeah, know what I mean? So sure. you you got the you got the fucking skill. <laughs> I got <laughs> Larry you, I got Larry Chen originals all over my yeah. office, and you guys out there should go to Larry's Etsy store. Yeah. Uh, not only do you have autofocus on the Hoonigan channel mm-hmm. going on, but uh, Larry Larry underscore Chen underscore F O T O on Instagram. Yeah. But go to search for Larry Chen on Etsy. Mm-hmm. He's got prints up the fucking yin yang, and they are uh, considering the provenance, considering they are printed to order and presumably signed. Yeah, I sign um, each one and I pack each one with care. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, these things are amazing. You get one of the, you get a print like this, you throw it in a, in a high quality frame. They're standard sizes, so you don't have to go crazy custom frame. You just yeah. get your frame, and uh, beautiful color palettes. Beautiful cars, and, and I'm uh, like, for example, I'm even selling ones that are signed by Ken Block. Like I, you know, I shoot. Oh, with you got Ken. a you got a Ken yeah, signed if one. You go to oh, the there first, you go. Cool. If you go to the uh, oh yeah, the, like the, the first cliff, one, the climb. Oh, signed by Left. Ken Block. 150 bucks, bro. Uh, the one on the yeah, yeah that one. So, so, so does Ken take you know, a rip of that? Well, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm I'm able to no, actually, actually no because he doesn't. He's a he, good friend. He, you know, he's so good to work with. I'm so lucky. Anytime I get to work with him, I'm so excited. And, you know, I just print some of these out and I bring them to the shoot and he just, in five minutes, he yeah. signs just super quick, you know? Wow. And for a fan, like, to get that access. Yeah. You know, if somebody is a Ken Block fan, yeah, yeah. How are you going to get something that was touched by him? Dude, the, you know, everywhere I go in Los Angeles, Everywhere I go, every time I leave the house, mm-hmm. I see something that says Hoonigan on it. Yeah. Every single yeah. time. And they they are doing well over there. It, whether you like it or not, you know, it's car culture. You know? I'm 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 happy to see people that I like doing well. Mm-hmm. I like you and Scotto and Ken and all of them guys over there. I think yeah. they're all fun as fuck. Right. I'm happy to see all these people having fun and earning a good living. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? That's great. We appreciate being able to do stuff with you. Um, if you and, didn't give me free prints, I would definitely go to your Etsy store and buy them. Oh, oh I appreciate it. <laughs> the one downstairs is fucking cool. Yeah. The 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 printed on the on the uh, acoustic panel. Yeah. That's some dope shit, and it's yeah. really functional. I've, I've never ever seen that. Yeah, it's brand. Yeah. They, they just started doing it. It's brand new. Yeah, we we actually. I feel like we need to shoot more together. I want to go to yeah. Pikes Peak next year with you. I yeah, think that'd be fucking so fun. You should come, fun. and then you should just ride with me, and then I could show you all the cool spots. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I think I'll just bring cool. meats and a grill. <laughs> just make food. I'll just be shooting, and then uh, I'll serve yeah, you behind yeah. you. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so many just get a, you just get, get the sunrise shot of me grilling over yeah. the clouds with the race car going by. <laughs> it's I want like a good you know like there. the hero shot where yeah. he's walking away from the explosion nonchalant. Mm-hmm. I want like fucking monster Tajima crossed up behind me, and I'm just like 
adjusting my chicken sausage <laughs> <laughs> a breakfast link <laughs> basically yeah that's my I dream like that. shot yeah dude thanks for coming in no, what a great you. fucking show i love having you in here yeah. in the new studio and uh it's awesome let's do more no i appreciate it and thank you for my giant uh not my giant print i'm gonna take the framer tomorrow awesome very exciting <laughs> uh thanks everybody what a great show zach nice job producing today very good <laughs> very good job does I, did anyone in this audience notice our new lights we have we have four new lights in the studio now to get some better light over here and some better light over there. It's, it's good. Whatever. Who gives a shit? New lights. <laughs> Jay, Jay was very proud of the new lights, and I'm glad he came in to do them. I like this a lot. That's the, dope, the right? The 996 yeah. Turbo Gauge Cluster. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I can, I can get you one here. if you'd like. Oh, man. This looks awesome. Someone yeah. called my brother-in-law and asked for that. But without Shoot. the TST logo on it, <laughs> I will put this. I will put this in my new shop. If you, if we can you, get you one if yeah, you want. Yeah, I think These it might so cost cool. a little bit of money. I don't yeah. think my brother's a cheap. He's a cheap Jew. I don't think it goes for free. It was. It wasn't. That one was for free. These ones were not for free. That well, was he's, a gift. he's your brother-in-law. He's not Larry's brother. He's not Larry's brother. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good and point. I can't nice go guy. offering up the discounts <laughs> yeah. onto someone else. But, um, dude, it's always good to see you. No, Thanks for coming in. Thanks for listening, you. folks, live and direct and uh, and later on the YouTube. Larry Chen, F-O-T-O, underscores uh, on Instagram, and buy his prints on Etsy. Thanks, man. We'll see you guys later. Bye.